It's game day in Ann Arbor, Michigan. 107,000 strong on hand for the season opener. Lloyd Carr and the Wolverines arriving a short while ago. Mike Hart and his teammates eyeing a national championship. September Saturday in Ann Arbor, Michigan. We welcome you to the University of Michigan. The season opener. Appalachian State, the Mountaineers come to the big house to take on the University of Michigan Wolverines. And for the first time, the maize and blue take the field. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Tom Brenneman. Welcome to the season kickoff of the Big Ten Network. You look at the Michigan Wolverines are ranked in the top five. And Charles, when you look at them, especially in offense, there are lots of reasons why. Yes, they have a variety of guys who can make things go on offense. It starts up front with their big offensive tackle, the best blocker in the Big Ten and maybe the country, Jake Long. He's terrific. Also, then you go to the quarterback, Chad Henney, Mr. Consistency, takes care of the football, knows how to deliver it to his playmakers. Then Mike Hart, he is the soul of this team, an emotional leader, and also gives them toughness in the running game. And finally, out wide, their playmaker, Mario Manningham. Nine touchdowns in six games last year before hurting his knee. He is a big play waiting to happen. Now, if there are questions about this Michigan team, it's about the defense. Only four starters returned from a year ago. Fortunately for the Wolverines, one of the starters is Sean Crable, their senior captain, and his game is predicated on speed. Ten and a half tackles for loss last year, four and a half sacks. Lloyd Carr says he runs as well as any Wolverine linebacker. Now the team they're trying to slow down, Appalachian State, back-to-back -back years, Division I AA national champions. Last year they did it with a freshman quarterback. And this guy is magic. Armonte Edwards, 2,000 yards passing, 1,000 yards running. He makes them go. And behind him is Kevin Richardson, the Southern Conference his offensive player of the year last year he scored 30 touchdowns great atmosphere as always in ann arbor the 201st consecutive game there have been better than a hundred thousand on hand last year the mountaineers celebrated a national championship the wolverines would like to do it this year you're watching the big 10 network Minnesota's out to spoil Penn State's season with a shocking upset. The Big Ten's greatest games, Tuesday at 6 Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network. The Big House, capacity 107,501. How did they all find parking? This is Big Ten country. This is where it lives. To make sure you get the Big Ten Network, go to BigTenNetwork.com or call 866-WANT-B-1-0. It's not just a jersey. It's a symbol of who we are. A community of coaches, student athletes, and fans. 
bound together by a code of conduct. Big Ten Network football is brought to you by U.S. Bank, home of the five-star service guarantee by Cooper Tires. Don't give up a thing. And by Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be here. Well, and if you're watching at home, would you love to be here? Ann Arbor, Michigan, Michigan Stadium. Over 107,000. Expectations always very high for head coach Lloyd Karn. His 13th year today coaches his 150th game at Michigan, looking for a second national championship. Two national championships already in the hip pocket of Jerry Moore, the head coach at Appalachian State. He is in his 19th season and today coaches his 300th game as a head football coach at the collegiate level. The tri-captains for Michigan. Yes, there are four there. They select one captain for each and every game. That would be Anton Campbell, number nine. But the three tri-captains for the year, Jake Long, Sean Crable, and Mike Hart for Jake Long, back-to-back -back years as a Michigan captain. Only the 11th multiple captain in Michigan's history. A lot of respect for that young man on this team. Michigan will receive to begin this 2007 season. The all-time winningest program in college football history, the Michigan Wolverines. Now there are changes in college football again this year as far as the rules are concerned, Charge. And what do you think about some of these rule changes? We'll give them to you first and then make a comment on it if you wouldn't mind. Well, I know one that's going to pop up there is that we're kicking off from the 30-yard line now. And if you like offense, you love this rule. Defensive coaches despise this rule because now field position is going to change clearly in favor of the offense. Harder to kick the ball at the end zone and get touchbacks. The clock starting at the snap of the ball after first downs and when the ball is legally touched. Everything done right now to help the offenses again. Last year they tried to do some different things to speed the game up, but the offenses are going to like this year's timing rules. So Appalachian State on the road in the big house as nicknamed by the great Keith Jackson. Julian Roush, a senior from Gastonia, North Carolina, set to tee it up. And waiting on the football for Michigan, number four, Brandon Miner, and number 25, Johnny Sears. Julian Roush has an extremely strong leg. He thinks that this rule is not going to hurt him. We'll see on this opening kick because it's a lot longer for these guys to run downfield and cover. Here we go. The college football season underway in Ann Arbor. And a line drive kick fielded at the 15-yard line. That's a tight end, Mike Massey, and he brings it out across the 30. And they'll spot the ball at the 34-yard line. A good return of 18 yards. Chad Henning beginning his fourth season as a Michigan quarterback. He's made 37 consecutive starts, a 27 and 10 overall record. He will break every passing record at Michigan before the year is over. Moundros, the fullback number 44, leading the way for Mike Hart. Slips off to the left side and is out to the 38-yard line. Tripped up by Jock Rowland, the middle linebacker of the Mountaineers. Let's take a look at Michigan in the backfield. Hart, the All-American, likewise for Mario Manningham. Boy, some weapons all over the field offensively for Chad Henney. And when you have guys up front like they do, All-Americans on the left side and Long and Kraus on the right side untested. First-year starters, Boren, Chula, and Schillen. Manningham, his first touch today, out across the 40 to the 42, and it'll bring up third down and two. So 
So an early third down test for Henny and company and for this Mountaineer defense. It is a huge one for them. And right now, I would think you find Jake Long, number 77, and move behind him and Adam Krause to give the ball to Mike Hart. They hand it off to Hart, and he has a first down across the 45-yard line. Take a look at the secondary. Very, very experienced, with the exception of Leonard Love. Titus Howard, the senior, strong safety, disciplined. He will miss one game. That game is today. But Jerry Moore has great experience in touchstone, in Wose, the corners, and Corey Lynch, the senior at free safety. And to throw, looking to the far side, dumps it off to Massey. Still on his feet, shot down at the 38-yard line, first down Michigan. And if you're a Michigan fan, get used to that. Why? That's because they have so many weapons out wide, people are going to try and match up and double and bracket the wide receivers. So the tight end has to become effective for the passing game to continue to flourish for Michigan. They've worked hard on it, and Massey's into the game early. Boy, talk about a football family. Massey, of course, his brother Patrick, a captain at Michigan. His brother played at Ohio State, Jim Jr., and his father, Jim, played football at Notre Dame. Massey comes limping back to the sideline after getting cut down by Corey Lynch. Well, at least they got two for Michigan in that family. <laughs> Hard a big hole. Stiff arms his way inside the five. A gain of 27 for the All-American. And this is terrific, Tom. You outlined the inexperienced right side of the offensive line for Michigan. Who's opened the biggest hole in this game thus far? The inexperienced right side. Justin Bourne at center. Jeremy Chula at right guard. Steven Schilling at right tackle. That will do worlds of good for their confidence. The first and goal for the Wolverines on this here first possession of the season. And they're going to try to get Hart to the end zone. He does. Four carries, 46 yards on that opening drive for the senior out of Syracuse, New York. Mike Hart, Jason Gingell. Nails a point after. Of course, he's replacing Garrett Rivas as the Michigan kicker this year. What a start for the Wolverines. Exactly what they drew up. Run the ball, run the ball, throw it once or twice. Pound it into the end zone with Mike Hart. Wild Wings, you have to be here. The number one barrier against insects and weeds just got even better. Introducing YieldGuard VT Triple. These root tissue scans prove YieldGuard VT Triple roots express more consistent insect controlling protein for an even better barrier of yield protection. Better root protection, stalk protection, and unsurpassed weed control of the Roundup Ready system to maximize yield potential of today's top hybrids. New Yield Guard VT Triple, the Yield Protection System. With a nimble 50 inch width, it's the most agile, only trail capable side by side in the world. Introducing the new Ranger Razor. The wait is over. Razor Sharp side by side performance. See it up close to your local Polaris Ranger dealer.
when it's people who do the right thing, they call it being responsible. When it's an insurance company, they call it Liberty Mutual. Responsibility. What's your policy? Liberty Mutual. Welcome back to Ann Arbor, where Michigan leads seven to nothing over Appalachian State. And they did it the way Bo Schembechler would have loved it. They ran it over the big boy. Jake Long, number 77, the All-American tackle. Mike Hart, their All-American running back. Four carries, 46 yards on the initial drive. Of course, Michigan beginning a season of football for the first time since 1969 that Bo Schembechler is not here. But he's here. He will always be here. Short kick by Brian Wright, fielded by the freshman Coco Hillary, and he is hammered to the ground by Brendan Engelman. So the Wolverines on their opening play brought to you by Holiday Inn Express. The scoring drive, six plays, capped off by a touchdown by Mike Hart, who rushed for nearly 50 of those yards. So now Armonte Edwards, the sophomore, who as a true freshman did not start until the third game of last season, had one of the greatest seasons any college quarterback has ever had, only the fifth quarterback in the history of college football to throw for over 2,000 yards and run for better than 1,000. Hands it off to Kevin Richardson, and he is bottled up immediately by Terrence Taylor and Tim Jamison. Richardson, like Hart, will become his school's all-time leading rusher before the season is over. We will see a lot of four receiver sets, and they'll run the option out of that set. Up front, they believe Kerry Brown is the best pro prospect they have had in recent memory. Brett Irvin, a redshirt freshman, starts in place of the senior Scott Suttle. Five receiver set, no setback for the Mountaineers. And Armonte Edwards already checking off, making sure his line is getting the call. Short drop, good throw, and a catch is made by Matt Klein, another freshman. And he's out across to the 32-yard line, a gain of six third down upcoming. For the Wolverines defensively, only four starters returned from a year ago. Greg Banks replaces Brandon Graham in the lineup. One of the returning starters, All-American candidate Sean Crable, in the secondary, Jamar Adams is a Thorpe Award watch list player to begin the year. Morgan Trent returns as a starter at corner. The spread has already forced Michigan into more of a nickel look, five DBs. Third and four, they cash in on the third down, and maybe more. Off to the races, and going all the way to the end zone, the speedster Dexter Jackson. He was a Southern Conference 200-meter dash champion, and he ran away from the Michigan defense. Holy mackerel. Tom, the one thing we heard from Appalachian State, and when I talked to people around the Southern Conference, what they told me is, one thing about Appalachian State, they can run. They're never intimidated by any one speed because they have it in spades themselves. We saw it on that play. Dexter Jackson, and just as you described, he ran away from the secondary after catching the pass. Wow. So now the point after to try and tie it at seven for Julian Roush. Good snap, good hold, and we are tied at seven. The Mountaineers walking into the big house, take an early blow, get off the mat as Jackson races for 68 yards and a touchdown. The big house, capacity 107,501. How did they all find parking? This is Big Ten country, and this is where it lives. To make sure you get the Big Ten Network, go to BigTenNetwork.com or call 866-WANT-B-1-0.
Kickoff continues with more regional action. The Team Booster era begins as Minnesota battles Bowling Green, or Indiana clashes with Indiana State. Tonight, only on the Big Ten Network. Even the first day I met Coach, he made me feel like I could do better. Uh, you can do better. If you believe in me. I hated that. Feeling like the best I could do would only last one day. I will believe in what will be. But I stuck with it. Well, actually, he stuck with me. When I finally did win, he wasn't surprised. I knew you had it in you. Believing. Pass it on. You did real good. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. This is the Big Ten Network. 7-7, not even five minutes into the game here in Ann Arbor. A pleasure to be joined by the third member of our crew this year. Let's check in downstairs and say hello to Carissa Thompson. Hi, Carissa. Hi, Tom. Thank you very much. When Appalachian State found out that they would be coming to the big house for their first game, the only people more excited than the players were the fans. 3,000 lucky Mountaineers fans have a ticket to today's game, but even more either flew or made the 10-and-a-half-hour drive from Boone to Ann Arbor, and Coach Moore even made the joke So thank you very much. Boy, we had a great time in the hotel with some of their followers today. And on the ensuing kickoff all the way out to the 43-yard line is Johnny Sears. Back-to-back -back years, and Sears has been the Michigan primary return man. 26 yards, and the kicker, Julian Roush, made the tackle. Our Holiday Inn Express scoring drive, it did not take long. A minute and 36 seconds. Three plays, 74 yards. And for Mr. Jackson, his first receiving touchdown in his last 15 games. And they need a big year out of Dexter Jackson this year at the wide receiver position. He's off to a terrific start, obviously. For Michigan, back to the ground. And again, it's Mike Hart, and this time defended very well by the Mountaineer defense. First man to meet him, Jock Roman. Let's take a look at our Suzuki keys to the game today. And for Appalachian State, it's steady as they attack, meaning no fumbles, no turnovers, and they did exactly that. They attacked on their first offensive possession. For Michigan, they needed confidence plays on defense. The way last year ended, they left a chink in the armor of the Michigan team. The first drive did not help. And Michigan had so many All-Americans all over the defensive side of the ball, and then they ran into Ohio State in Columbus. And after a very good defensive half in the Rose Bowl against Southern California, things did not go well in the second half. Penny fires, and the catch is made at the 49-yard line by the sophomore from Orlando, Greg Matthews, a gain of six. It'll bring up third down. This is where it's going to be difficult for Appalachian State because the Michigan offensive line, well-schooled in technique, no one got near Chad Henney had plenty of time to come off of his primary target and look for a secondary guy and complete the pass. They're going to need to find a way to get pressure on him while holding up in the secondary. Hart, the lone running back for the first time in the regular season. Michigan is going to the shotgun this year. Here comes the blitz and down goes Henny. Off the corner comes Pierre Banks, their leading tackler a season ago. And he ran right by and looked like the tight end. They had a twist in the middle, and they brushed twisted, and there was a blown blocking assignment. No one at all blocked Pierre Banks. Illegal formation on Michigan, less than seven on the line of scrimmage. Penalties decline, fourth down. I guess we found out exactly why he came free. Didn't have enough guys in the line of scrimmage, weren't quite sure what formation to be in, and they turned a the guy loose to their quarterback's blind side. 
not good, obviously. Well, Dexter Jackson had very little time to catch his breath. He is standing back at his own 10 yard line to return the punt by Zoltan Mesko. He was a Wolverines punter a season ago. Good kick by Mesco. Jackson from the 15 got a big block. Or did he call for a fair catch? Obviously, the man who made that block, Chase Laws, was unaware that a fair catch had been signaled for. Boy, and he laid a hit big time on Charles Stewart. Not bad for former quarterback Chase Laws. I think Appalachian State has come to Ann Arbor to play a little football. could have ridden for any team he wanted. He could have ridden any ATV he wanted. But there was only one thing that he really wanted. The championship. Doug Gust and the Suzuki Quad Racer R450. 2006 WPSA Power Sports ATV Tour Champions. I'd like a personal checking account. Well, I'm all ears. What's your name? Uh, Rob. Rob Lee. All right, Bill, can I call you Willie? Emma, how about a cup of coffee for Frank here? Rob. I heard that. You married Ernesto? No. A little something for the missus. Here's your milkshake, Kenny. Rob. Uh -huh. Personal checking at other banks isn't always personal. I need you here, Teddy. U.S. bank checking is built around you with interest on balances, free internet bill pay, free ATMs, and the most reward choices, even cash back. U.S. bank. Five-star service guaranteed. How many stars does your bank have? Bye, Murray. Rob. In 2006, baseball enjoyed a thrilling season that couldn't have been scripted any better. What a catch! Four home runs in a row! The Midsummer Classic. That is a bomb! Michael Young, a hero in the ninth inning for the AL. If there's one thing that's certain, no matter how you cut it, you can't script October. Tigers in four! have won the pennant. The Tigers march to the World Series. Cardinals will go in as underdogs. Wainwright trying to end the World Series. St. Louis has a World Series winner. The drama continues this season on Fox. A 7-7 game, Appalachian State and Michigan. 9.30 to play in the opening quarter, a five wide receiver set. They open up the field to spread offense, and if Edwards wants to run it, let her rip. And Michigan counters with five defensive backs, and here comes Edwards. Spins off one tackle, not only you see, or did the football come loose? They're saying he was down. The official's all over. Our referee. Is John O'Neill and said that Edwards was already ruled down. Tom, as you mentioned right before the snap, he can run it. That was a designed running play. Just a quick direct snap to the quarterback, and he tried to find a hole. Ball came free, but the officials ruled it was down on the turf. And a good call. Yes, he was down. Corman, the inside handoff, and flags litter the field. Prior to the snap, false start, number 72 on the offense. Five-yard penalty, repeat second down. That is Jonathan Bischke trying to replace the two-time All-American right tackle Matt Eisenhower. Well, he's whistled for the infraction. We talked about the Michigan defense last year. Simply spectacular until the very end. Yeah, the Ohio State game, they got gashed. And then, of course, USC, the second half. That was a 3-3 game at halftime. But both teams use spread principles to operate against the Michigan defense. That plays right into what Appalachian State does well. After the penalty, a second down and seven. Negating that eight-yard run a moment ago by Edwards. Down he goes. Yeah. 
Sean Crable converging along with Will Johnson. A loss of five. Tommy got our first coverage sack of the season for the Michigan defense. Armani Edwards had the field divided in half. He wanted to go to one side and one side only. And Johnny Sears had it locked up on that side at the cornerback position. That allowed the rush to get to him, and Michigan comes up with their initial sack of the season. Well, you can't put a premium on how the Mountaineers cannot make the silly mistakes like the penalty. Jerry Moore told us that yesterday. And now they're hurt in field position. Edward steps up. He's in trouble. But he hangs on to the football, brings it out to the 20. And again, Crable in on the tackle alongside Terrence Taylor. So after the eight-yard game, put him at second and two. The penalty backed him up, and the sack takes him out of any threat. And I can't overestimate how important it was for the Michigan defense to have that type of a series. After what had happened on the previous one, the big play early, the secondary had taken a lot of abuse in the offseason. They needed confidence plays. They had a good series there. That will help settle them down. Neil Young, the punter from his own five. Short kick. And it's out of bounds. Let's see where they spot it. Just shy of midfield at the Michigan 48. Only a 33-yard punt by Neil Young. You may remember he missed time with knee surgery, and it was knee surgery to his kicking leg. And they really missed him last year. He's part of a, part of a, a strong feature of their team, although the last punt is not evidence of what he normally does. Let's see what Mike DeBoer, the offensive coordinator, does here, Tom. He's got great field position. He may decide to try to get his playmakers out wide really involved. And I hand it off to Hart, and just nowhere to run. Running behind the big left side of Long and Krause, but Anthony Williams took him down. I'd like to tell you that tomorrow night, Big Ten women's soccer will make its debut on the Big Ten Network. Where Syracuse will take on the Michigan Wolverines in high definition. Action starts at 8 Eastern on the Big Ten Network. And of course, here on the Big Ten Network, not only about just men's football in the Big Ten, but men's sports, women's sports, Olympic sports, they're all coming your way. Hard in motion. And Henny to screen to Brandon Miner. Got a good block. And it's run out of bounds. Close to a first down. It appears to be very close, depending on the spot. Got a good block from Adam Krause. And that's very difficult to do. Watch number 57 in blue to the left of your screen. He sets up. Now he goes out in space. Nice job. Able to knock down the initial tackler who doesn't get close to Brandon Miner. Allows him to gain additional yardage. Well, the spot of the football gave him a first down. You know, we talked about Long and Krauss and how the Long is already an All-American. They believe Krauss will be an All-American, a fifth-year senior. But Bohr in the center making his first start. Likewise for Chula. And Steven Schilling, a redshirt freshman, makes his college football debut. Manningham at the top of the screen. And he's looking for a bundle. And it's Manningham. Batted down, defended beautifully. On the far side by Justin Wose. A four-year starter is Wose. And an underrated player because his partner on the other side, Jerome Touchstone, gets all the attention. This ball needed a little more air. If he has more air towards the pylon, Manningham doesn't have to break stride. When he had to break stride, Wose was able to come back into the play and knock it away. But it didn't surprise me that Mike DeBoer took a shot right there, Tom. Field position, big playmakers. They know they like to run the football first down. It's a great time to run the play action pass deep. Second down and 10 for the Wolverines. Arrington in motion. They play fake one way, and Henny just has to throw it away. Under heavy pressure again by Pierre Banks. He delivered the sack on the last Michigan drive. He's a leading tackler from last year. Played the weak side linebacker. They moved into what they call the bandit position now to allow him to come at the quarterback more. A terrific blitzer, great speed. How about this? You know where he developed it? He's the 16th of 17 kids in this game. <laughs> you need speed at the dinner table if you want to get something. You ain't lying. You better get there in a hurry. Well, now a big important play for the Michigan offense. We talked about their defense standing tall on that last drive. See if John Wiley, the coordinator, goes after him here. 
Good protection for Henny. Steps up, delivers a strike to the far side. First down for Adrian Arrington to the 25. A gain of 17. How about the, how about the pass protection for Chad Henny? This offensive line saved the sack on a missed assignment because that was a very deep route and no one was near Chad Henney, allowed him to really step into the throw and get terrific pace on it. And Adrian Arrington, back from purgatory this summer, oh, yeah. makes the catch. He ought to be the best conditioned guy here, Tom. 60 straight days of running the stadium steps. And there are a lot of steps. <laughs> Hard tackled after a loss of two. Coming up to make the stop, Cam Spear. Spears, a former middle linebacker, they, they, they moved to the weak side because Jacques Roman has come in and played well, but they wanted Spear on the field. That was a great job of just reading the play, reading the keys, and great straight-ahead pursuit. All you have to do is walk the stairs here at the University <laughs> of Michigan State. You don't, you don't break a sweat, all right? I can't imagine running them 60 straight days. No, they had the coaches alternating <laughs> shifts to watch it. Hey, one guy couldn't handle all that. No. Hart breaks a tackle. And carries inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. So another third down and coming for the Michigan offense after the eight-yard game. You know, Kevin Richardson, Rappalachian State, gets a lot of attention for his vision and balance and burst. How about Mike Hart on that play? Takes the initial hit, looks like he's going down, uses his left arm to steady himself, gains additional yardage. He's added a little weight this season, got stronger in the weight room because he wants to carry it 25 times a game. He wants to be that workhorse. Well, a third down and four for the Wolverines. Up and out near 20, short drop for Henny. Looks to the middle of the field and finds Manningham for a first down at the 13. Good coverage by Touchstone, but and the last cut by Manningham got in the football. Exactly what I was thinking, because I, the coverage was nice. Sometimes you're just beaten by a better play. And the reason it was a better play, look at Manningham's body and positioning. He was able to firmly block off Touchstone, so he had to try and go through his body to get to the football. Manningham's a big frame guy, almost like boxing out in basketball and setting your body wide. But to the near side, they have Matthews to the top of your screen, Junior Hemingway, and they hand it off to Hart. And his last three, four, five carries outside of the eight-yard gain a moment ago. Not much running room after carrying four times for nearly 50 yards on the opening drive. Sometimes things come a bit too easy. All right, the first drive, as you pointed out, 46 yards on four carries. He now has a total of nine carries for 53 yards. So you see how things have stiffened. Mentally, maybe Michigan went to the sidelines and said, guys, we could just run over these people. Not happening since then. Brandon Miner comes in for Hart. And on second down, heading to throw it. Jumps it off. To Matthew. Touchdown, Michigan. Shallow cross route. They brought Matthews in short motion towards the football. Then they ran him underneath because they took the other receivers and pushed them into the end zone to clear the space for Chad Henney to find Matthews underneath, and then he wins the sprint to the end zone. And for Matthews, his first career touchdown. The point after is good by Gingell. So Matthews out of Orlando, Florida. You're stomping ground. The pride of Edgewater High, home of the Eagles. A terrific program there, and they've been a power for the last 10 years. And now it's all good Matthews in high school, and he knew he was special. For the Wolverines, back on top, 14-7, 3-16 to play in the opening quarter. The big house, capacity 107,501. How do they all find parking? This is Big Ten country, and this is where it lives.
To make sure you get the Big Ten Network, go to BigTenNetwork.com or call 866-WANT-B-1-0. They are the Big Ten's greatest games. Tuesday, get ready for a colossal doubleheader. First, the Big Ten titles on the line at the Horseshoe as undefeated Michigan clashes with unbeaten Ohio State in a nail-biter from last season. Then, we're going back to 1999 as Minnesota's out to spoil Penn State's season with a shocking upset. The Big Ten's greatest games, Tuesday at 6 Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network. 14-7, Michigan in front. Let's check in once again on the sidelines with Carissa Thompson. We'll do that here in a moment. And after this kick, Michigan getting on the field quickly. They're not taking a lot of time to celebrate a 14-7 lead. <laughs> they remembered the last celebration. Didn't last very long, did it? No, it did plays, not. and we were tied up. Coco Hillary from his own four-yard line. And Hillary finding room out to the 35-yard line and perhaps a touchdown saving tackle by Donovan Warren after a turn of 33. Todd, this new kickoff rule is already coming into play because the ball's not getting to the end zone on the kickoffs. So you're adding an additional five-yard run for the guys covering. And now the ball's out over the 30-yard line. It used to be your goal was to keep teams inside the 20 on kickoff coverage. Now it might be more real than at 25 or 30, and that's good for the offense. Holiday Inn Express, Wolverine scoring drive. 52 yards and 10 plays. And Matthews, his first career a touchdown. To Richardson and his first decent game early in this one. Of course, he's hoping for another banner year. And here he is, Carissa Thompson. Carissa. Thank you, Tom. When Michigan found out they were playing Appalachian State, everyone's like, who's Appalachian State? Everyone that is except for Jamar Adams, an NC native. He knows the Mountaineers well, especially Leonard Love. They grew up together, played the same position, and wear the same number. It really is a great story, and uh, Carissa, thank you very much. And uh, Jamar Adams told us yesterday, by the way, what a delightful young man he is. But, but he said that uh, Leonard Love's father was his coach yeah. playing football, and, and he used to pick him up at the house every day, take him to practice. He said he's like my second father. His, dad, his father's name is Perry. Third down handoff, and it's good enough for a first down. So stepping out of the box a little bit is Jerry Moore after having pretty good success throwing the ball. Now he hands it off, and it's a no huddle offense. Love starts the game today after the one game suspension to the man who starts in front of him, Titus Howard. Yeah, how about that? He comes here, didn't expect to start. The suspension happens now. Both of them started, and as Chris pointed out, they even wear the same uniform number. Foreman in motion, and again, they'll stay on the ground, again with Richardson, and maybe gain a yard. The spread-type teams have been the ones to give Michigan trouble. People look at Ohio State and they say, spread? You know, Troy Smith's not moving around like Armonte Edwards did, but it's still the same principles. Gaps in the offensive line, four and five wide receivers to make sure the field is spread all the way laterally, which gives you those natural seams for running backs and receivers to find. Edwards fires to the far side of Corman, and a good game. A couple of yards shy of a first down. You know the amazing thing about this offense, the fact that, you know, Jerry Moore, their head coach, used a power eye for 15 years and then had almost an epiphany that, you know what, I'm going to completely change everything I do, went to this offense, and three years later they win back-to-back -back national championships. And they, they said you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Jerry Moore is an example that you actually can, and not only that, he's flourished. I don't think they got the playoff for a good day in time. Well start. Number 57 on the offense. Five yards to the lead. Okay, third down. Sometimes what you get, and that's the brand new center, Brett Irving. Sometimes what you get in these situations when you have to hold in a long time, 
All right, you saw the center move. He moved first before he even snapped the football because you get a little bit impatient. You're stuck in the blocks for a long time in this type of an offense. You have to have a little bit of patience. Very difficult for a redshirt freshman making his first start in front of 107,000 people to always have that patience. And again, another big penalty by the Mountaineers. They just can't afford them. They can't afford them because it would have been third and short. Third and one now goes to third and a long six. And they're coming after Edwards. Steps up, delivers, first down. What a hit by Adams, but hanging on to the football is Josh Johnson, the sophomore out of Newland, North Carolina. What a big conversion that is. 14-yard gain, and that's exactly what Josh Johnson does. Had a chance to chat with people around the program. You know what Josh Johnson's father does? Works in the physical plant at Appalachian State. He's a tough physical kid, just like the old man, and he'll run those dirty routes inside and absorb the hits. The first down at the Michigan 35, back to the ground. And again, it's Richardson, the sixth carry of the game. He will become Appalachian State's all-time rushing leader. Before this year is over, he comes into the game needing 954 yards to supplant John Settle, the great back in the mid-80s. What an opening quarter for Appalachian State. There is reason to be excited. They're hanging in there in the big house, 14-7, and will return to Ann Arbor after these messages. The Big House. Capacity, 107,501. How did they all find parking? This is Big Ten country. And this is where it lives. To make sure you get the Big Ten Network, go to BigTenNetwork.com or call 866-WANT-B-1-0. It's not a society. It's not a guild. It's not for the ordinary. It's not for the average. It's for the difference makers. It's for the leaders. It's for the best. Hey guys, thanks for coming. Are we in trouble? No, you're not in trouble. I just uh, want to set some ground rules. Like, like what? Well, remember last week when you hit Vinny in the head with the shovel? <laughs> I do not recall that. <laughs> of course not. Well, it was pretty graphic. Too graphic for the kids. <laughs> so I'm going to have to block you. I, you know, I got to make this up to you. This is Vinny's watch, and I want you to have it. You deserve no, it. Thank you. <laughs> That's really not necessary. No, no. Come here. As a parent, sometimes it's hard to believe your kids listen to a word you say. So when it comes to drugs and alcohol, it can be tempting to say nothing at all. But you actually have tremendous influence. So it's a simple choice. In this hand, how to make your kids more likely to get involved with drugs. In this one, how you can help them stay away from drugs. is the Big Ten Network. The 
season opener in Ann Arbor, Michigan. In front of nearly 108,000 in Michigan Stadium, the largest stadium in college football. And I'm sure some are feeling a wee bit nervous right about now. We begin the second quarter with the Mountaineers of Appalachian State on the move, trailing by a touchdown. Richardson bounces off a couple of tackles and is inside the 25, and that'll be another first down for Appalachian State. How about the pinball right there? Bang, bang, bounces off of people as you described, continues to keep his balance and uses his vision to find the openings. There's contact there, makes a miss. Contact there, falls forward. Great run by Kevin Richardson. Left tackle, I could tell it was shaken up on the last play, and here's a reverse the other way. A good block, and to the end zone, did he get in? No, shoved out of bounds, stepped out of bounds, actually, before he got there at the four-yard line. Dexter Jackson again, a gain of 19. He might be the fastest man on the field. And watch on the left side the blocks he receives. The wall set up. 82, Josh Johnson, 61. Mario Acatelli, the true sophomore, steps out of bounds about the five-yard line with the left foot. That's where he stepped out. Otherwise, he's into the end zone. And Acatelli, the Time out. play. Appalachian State, their first. Was this is a 30-second timeout. And it looked like he wanted to leave the game. But in their hurry-up offense, Acatelli stayed on the field despite limping and limping badly. And then Charles showing you what the Mountaineers believe they're made of, the kind of players they bring in, the kind of players they recruit. Acatelli goes out there, delivers a big block. He transferred his pain. He took that pain he felt <laughs> in the ankle and transferred it, to, transferred it to the Michigan defender. You talk about Mario Acatelli. Tom, they wanted to redshirt him last year. They thought he would redshirt, and he ended up starting as a true freshman and was all Southern Conference. He's come back this year. He's one of the cornerstones of a terrific offensive line, playing right next to number 76, Kerry Brown, their preseason All-American guard. Great misdirection. Jackson on the carry, and the wall was set up. Johnson, number 82, had a great block inside the wide receiver. If he doesn't step out, yeah, he looks like he's inside the pylon. But Dexter Jackson is used to carrying the ball. He carried it five times last year, averaged nearly seven yards a carry. In this type of an offense, you get misdirection. You get the option with the wide receivers. If people saw Wake Forest play last year. You know, if you see these types mm -hmm. of spread out teams, we utilize multiple people. We saw it in the championship game with Florida. Remember that? Absolutely. With, with, with all, Percy Harvin being a wide receiver, those guys come around carrying the ball. Same potential here for, for, for the uh, for the Wake, excuse me, for Appalachian State. I mean, the name you would think of if you're a Florida fan is Percy Harvin. And look to look at the left foot going down on the corner, right there. He needed to be about a half size smaller, and maybe he's got a touchdown. Maybe a little less width on the foot. What a game for Dexter Jackson, the senior, out of Dunwoody, Georgia. Already a touchdown reception. Spanning 68 yards. And now the misdirection play to bring the Mountaineers inside the Michigan five. And don't expect them to all of a sudden go power eye inside the five. They stay in the spread the whole way. Richardson. Met head on immediately by Chris Graham. He was the first man there. A lot of the spread teams like to come down inside, Tom, cut the splits down, bring in an extra blocker, and go into a different new personality. Appalachian State does not do that. They continue to stay in the spread and run their same offense no matter where they are on the field. They want to keep that distance out there to open the holes up for Edwards and for Richardson. Early movement, and again, it's Bisky. it looked like. The right we'll start number 72 on the offense. Five-yard penalty, repeat second down. And that could be the difference between a touchdown and having to kick a field goal. And if you ultimately have to kick more field goals, those are the things that catch up with you in the end. You pointed it out early, Tom. They can't afford to have those types of penalties to take them out of positions of scoring. That's three penalties now for 15 yards, and you can remember every single one of them. Each one has had an impact thus far. They're hoping to overcome this one and still get to the end zone. Three receivers to the top of your screen. Richardson, the third one in. And now 
before the top of your screen. Slam, catch made, and that is a touchdown for the Mountaineers. Hans Bedeshan, born in Haiti, moved to Miami, the only married player on this Mountaineer team, and he celebrates with wife and daughter after that touchdown. Lots of celebration going on. So the mascot, Yosef. And what they did here, I love the call by Jerry Moore because he flooded the zone with four receivers and was able to come inside. And then Batashad used great agility to cut inside Jamar Adams to make him miss the tackle. Point after is good. I know one thing, Charles. You and I have not seen Appalachian State. It is understandable how they have won back-to-back -back Division I AA National Championships. They're here to play. He could have ridden for any team he wanted. He could have ridden any ATV he wanted. But there was only one thing that he really wanted. The championship. Doug Gust and the Suzuki Quad Racer R450. 2006 WPSA Power Sports ATV Tour Champions. Clashes with unbeaten Ohio State in a nail-biter from last season. Then, we're going back to 1999 as Minnesota's out to spoil Penn State's season with a shocking upset. The Big Ten's Greatest Games, Tuesday at 6 Eastern. Only on the Big Ten Network. 13.35 to play until halftime. Appalachian State, the touchdown pass to Batashan to tie this game at 14 apiece. Armonte Edwards, 5 of 5 for 102 yards. Let's take a look at last year's U.S. Bank 2006 Big Ten standings. Ohio State beating Michigan on the final game of the regular season to win the outright title. Of course, both Ohio State and Michigan went to BCS games. Wisconsin, you're not allowed to have three teams from one conference go to a BCS game, but they certainly deserved it. Yeah, they didn't go because Michigan beat them head to head. A good kick this time. It is touched and then downed by Brandon Miner. So while we have a moment with 1335, let's send it back to Chicago and check in with Dave Revson. Dave Revson in the studio and Penn State having far less trouble with Florida International to Michigan is with Appalachian State. Anthony Morelli to Mickey Schuler there. Morelli 6 of 11. 80 yards and two TDs is 14 nothing Penn State. All right Dave thank you very much. Did Michigan. He say, yeah did he say Mickey Schuler? Is that the son of the Mickey Schuler? That would be something. Huh? There's a handoff to Hart and he breaks a tackle and then tries to get by Lynch who stayed on his feet and is able to bring him down after a gain of four. Since their initial drive, Michael Hart and now Brandon Miner coming into the game at tailback have had to make many more moves in order to get the same yardage or close, but not even getting the same yardage as they got on the initial drive. The same holes are not there. 
the so-called undersized defensive line of Appalachian State playing quite well. Hart now, 10 carries, 57 yards after a four for 46 start. And now flag before this play ever gets started. It looked like an early start somewhere. Prior to the snap, full start. Number 83 on the offense. Five-yard penalty, repeat second down. Mike Massey, the tight end. Those are the errors that we talked about with Appalachian State not being able to afford. They overcame it on the last drive, had a penalty, very next play through the touchdown pass. Michigan might be a little bit shaky at this moment, but tied 14-14. I'm not sure that you got young guys in the maze and blue. Really thought this was going to be occurring in this ball game. Well, you have both Miner and Hart now in the backfield for Michigan. That's Hart in motion. And Henny to throw. Looking down the sideline and looking for Manningham. And great, I mean great coverage by Jerome Touchstone. The crowd thought there was interference. That looked like just great coverage by a great corner cover. I concur because watch Touchstone. See, you can have contact until the ball's in the air in the college game. So when the ball was in the air was the determination and the officials determined the ball wasn't in the air while he had contact with the, with, with the wide receiver. What he did was just took him and ran him over the sideline and forced him out of bounds. This is a huge play for Michigan offensively. And his third and long, does John Wiley, the defense coordinator, load up to come after him? Or does he sit back and play zone and try and force a punt? Well, they're coming after the quarterback King being chased by Roman and has to throw it away. How about the Appalachian State Mountaineers? Three and out for Michigan after the game-tying touchdown a moment ago. And that was beautifully coordinated in terms of a defense. The pass rush was there, and still no one able to get free, even though Henny scrambles out of the pocket, something he worked on greatly this summer. Normally, when a guy gets out of the pocket, there might be a hole for a receiver to find to be open. There was none. Well, Dexter Jackson standing back at his own 35. It's Mesco to punt it. Should be good field position for Appalachian State at worst. Flag down on the field. And turning the corner, trying to anyway, Jackson. But again, a flag all the way back. Was it roughing the kicker by Corey Lynch? Is it roughing or running into? Because it's a difference in penalty. Running into is five yards. Roughing is the first. Running one. into the kicker. Number 47 on the defense. Five yard penalty. Repeat fourth down. There's your answer, Mr. Dick. So fortunately for Appalachian State, they get another shot at this thing because Michigan still won't have enough for a first down. It's not an automatic first down running into the kicker. You know that? Roughing the kicker is an automatic first down. How in the world do you flag a guy for that? That's he gets, he gets shoved one. right into the right. kicker and barely made any contact. And in the college game, the determination was made that they're just going to play the play. Doesn't matter whether in 10 or he was forced into it and so on and so forth. I don't know how you sit back there. Guy gets shoved. And I'm with you. It's I don't <laughs> Football. You know, the good thing for Appalachian State, they get the ball back. And remember this, running after a punt, Sometimes it seems to be a little more tiring than coming back to receive one. Let's see if Michigan can cover the same way. Well, they come flying down the field again. End over end punt. Jackson from the starter. Across the 40. And he is out of bounds at the 47. It looks like a late Michigan penalty. Field position continues to change if this goes the way we think it's going to, which is a hit on the sideline against Michigan. That'll tack on a personal foul and an additional 15 yards at the end of the play, if that's the call. Dead ball, late hit out of bounds, number 54 on the kicking team. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. That's Austin Panther. Time out. He's the junior college transfer and middle linebacker with a mistake. 14-14, and the Mountaineers get it back in Michigan territory. In Italy, you'll find Florence. In this case, Florence is a cow. And important because Italian cheesemakers wanted to make the best Parmesan and more of it. Knowing that cows fed certain feeds produced higher yields of Parmesan, Cargill developed special feeds and a supply chain so the cheesemakers get just the right milk. Now Florence, the cow, delivers lots of quality Parmesan to Florence, the city. Oh.
This is how Cargill works with customers. The big house. Capacity, 107,501. How do they all find parking? This is Big Ten country, and this is where it lives. To make sure you get the Big Ten Network, go to BigTenNetwork.com or call 866-WANT-B-1-0. For those who can't turn it off, now there's a place where you can always turn it on. This is Big Ten country. Starts this drive at the Michigan 37 yard line after the penalty. So first down, and Edwards out of the shotgun. This should be go time right here for Appalachian State. Now's the time to really continue to attack. They're going to hand it off to Richardson, and he's to the 35 yard line, picks up two. Chris Grant, the senior out of Indianapolis, on the tackle. The last three possessions for Appalachian State. A touchdown, the punt after a big penalty. Yep. And exactly. then another touchdown spanning 65 yards. If Michigan got a sack on that second possession, but that was set up by the penalty where they had to go for it on long yardage. Nine carries today, 30 yards for Kevin Richardson. Coco Hillary in motion. And they just throw a shovel pass there to Richardson. And he ran himself out of a first down. If he just sticks his nose straight ahead, he probably is able to dive to the 27-yard line. Instead, he's about a, a yard or two short. I am loving this play calling I'm seeing from Appalachian State. Because on that play, when they shoved it inside Tom to Richardson, they had taken all the wide receivers and flooded the wide side of the field to put all the action there and threw it back short side. Well, a third and a yard. Richardson, first down and more. Inside the Michigan 25 to the 24. Can you talk enough about the savvy of Richardson, a senior, a three-year starting, and a sophomore Edwards? And what you what you like here, because one thing to understand with Edwards, the reason the ball is handed off inside is that Michigan is keeping a good eye on it. If the defensive end doesn't crash down with the pulpit, with the tailback, the ball's handed inside. If he does crash down, Edwards will keep it and come out with it to the left out around there. Edwards steps up. He'll hang on to it. And is thrown to the ground at the 21 the yard line. That'll be Crable. Of course, many Michigan fans still talk about that play where Crable was whistled for the helmet on helmet hit late in the game in Columbus last year, which kept the Buckeye dry alive. A drive that culminated in a touchdown, the game winning touchdown. And one thing to keep in mind here for Michigan, the tough part about playing a spread team is you have to play what is called assignment football. Sometimes you think more than you more than you react, and that can put you back on your heels. Edwards checking off. Five receivers, three to the bottom of your screen. And the quick slant is Jackson. He'll run away from everybody. Touchdown, Appalachian State. 
and they are jumping up and down and celebrating on the Appalachian State sideline and in the crowd, and wouldn't you? You should if you're an Appalachian State fan. The spread makes you defend every inch on the field. And on that play, they ran what is called a rub route. I'm a former defensive back. That's a pick to me, okay? That's a rub route. T.J. Foreman, number 12, rubbed inside. And here comes Jackson to catch the ball and go into the end zone. Well, we talked about as a uh, point after is good, Armonte Edwards. How about the savvy of this 19-year-old seven of seven, three touchdown passes? The big house. Capacity, 107,501. How did they all find parking? This is Big Ten country, and this is where it lives. To make sure you get the Big Ten Network, go to BigTenNetwork.com or call 866-WANT-B-1-0. In 2006, baseball enjoyed a thrilling season that couldn't have been scripted any better. The Midsummer Classic. That is a bomb. Michael Young, a hero in the ninth inning for the AL. If there's one thing that's certain, no matter how you cut it, you can't script October. Tigers in four. Two run home run Molina. The Cardinals have won the pennant. Cardinals will go in as underdogs. Wainwright trying to end the World Series. St. Louis has a World Series winner. The drama continues this season on Fox. this route tj corman number 12 right there now i know a nascar rubbing is racing and that's called a rub route a lot of people call that a pick tj corman trying to run around appearing to run a pass route bumps into the defender jackson comes inside balls delivered the second reception for jackson a total of 88 yards his second touchdown of the game and just astounding this start by the appalachian state mountaineers and their sophomore quarterback are Monty Edwards and his favorite target, Dexter Jackson. This is Johnny Sears from the goal line. Another good kick by Roush. And losing the football is Sears. Are they ruling it a fumble or was he down on the ground? We're still waiting. It is Appalachian State football. At the Michigan 18-yard line. And this defense of the Wolverines, which quite frankly looks worn out at this point in the opening half, now has to come trotting and or walking back onto the field. They are not coming off of the bench with a lot of enthusiasm, it appears. You know, the alacrity that you're looking for. The ball that was not free was by Chase Laws. The quarterback turned wide receiver, turned fullback, I mean, turned linebacker. Was Sears down or not? It appeared that as he was going down, he laid the ball hit as he was falling. Well, I think that they're trying to get to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, you want to run the play if you're Appalachian State. They, you, they want the ball in play before it can be reviewed. But well, now it will be reviewed. And you know what? It Time should out. be. It should be. That the previous play is being reviewed. It should be. The Appalachian State fans won't like it, but based on the view we saw, this is the right thing. Mm -hmm. This has to be reviewed. This is too big of a play right here for both teams for it not to be reviewed. Watch Sears, 25. As he's going down, was his knee down? Was he down? Because, there, because once you're down, does the ground can't cause a fumble? But he drops it down. Does it come out before his knee hits? That's going to be the question the official has to answer. 
Was he down? Was that ball out before his knee hit? Because it, the way he was carrying it, he put the ball down, and then the knee was coming yeah, down. Yeah, it is so close. If now, from that angle, it looks like it would go in Michigan's favor. From yep. the higher angle, I think it looks Appalachian like it's States Appalachian got. State's ball. A replay official here with the Big Ten Conference. Oh, what a warm guy he is. Burl Sell, he popped in the booth to say hello. Yeah, he's up there with Mike Nevin, and they're operating on it. One more look for you. Watch the hand in the football. It is hitting the turf before the knee is hitting the ground, in my estimation. That's my determination. But I'm not Burl Sell, and I'm not Mike Nevin. They get the final call on it. But I will say this, Tom. If it does go against Michigan, this is the best thing that could have happened for their defense because now they got a chance to regroup if they have to go out there. Because you saw them coming out. They didn't look like they were very excited about going back out after that play. No. Did they? Sean Crable was yelling at his Tell teammates. Them, get out here. Get out here. And, and they were many of them were walking out, That's putting their helmets normal. on. Because you practice these situations. Most teams call them sudden change. Okay, oh, sudden change, the ball's inside the 10. Let's go defense, and you go out there and you don't go and you go running all over the place. You go out there, you get yourself huddled, you get yourself settled. But they came out not, not in a wave, they came out in drips, and that's not normal. John O'Neill, our referee, with the headset on, waiting from the replay official, officials upstairs, trying to determine was that a fumble or was Johnny Sears down? And many people are saying, okay, isn't there a time limit on this? There is not. College football, there's no time limit on getting the call right. We went over that in our Big Ten Network seminar with Dave Perry, the National Director of Football Officiating. So they want every angle they can get. See, is the ball down before his knee is down? I think Appalachian State has a tremendous case to have the football. Well, here we go. After review, the play and the call on the field is reversed. The runner was down by contact. First down, 10 yards to go for Michigan from the 20-yard line. Oh, big break. Well, I'm 0 for 1 on the year. And it was a close call. I mean, either way, depends, as you mentioned, certain angles kind of showed it different ways. Michigan, fortunate on that one. Oh, uh, Jerry Moore. Well, what a... An unbelievable job. Not only is he doing today. I mean, this guy is the staple of this football program. His 19th year, a native of Bonham, Texas. Was an outstanding wide receiver at Baylor University. And actually went to the Dallas Cowboys inaugural year training camp. Was among the last cut. He and I have something in common. I'll tell you about after this play. First down, Michigan from the 20. They'll hand it off to Brandon Meyer. And he's out across the 25. Yeah, hard to believe that Jerry Moore and I would have something in common, but Tom Landry cut both of us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good stuff. I think you made a mistake with Jerry. With me, he got it right. Well, he was not happy after the call. You can't blame him. Yeah, I, I, you can't blame him because he knows that he has Michigan on the run at this point. If he gets the ball back on offense, he can really put the pressure on the Wolverines. Second down give again is to Miner, and he has first down yardage out across the 30 to the 31. So Brandon Miner getting the carries on this Michigan drive, trailing by seven. See, I like the play calling here by Mike DeBoer. He knows he needs to settle down the entire football team, not just his offense. And I will challenge, I will guarantee you this. That's Mike DeBoer in the glasses in the middle, the offensive coordinator. I'll guarantee you this, Tom. You know exactly what happened on the sidelines with Michigan? That offensive line was challenged. You guys have to create some holes for us and get us moving. But they get the ball to the line of scrimmage quickly, and Appalachian State was not ready defensively, and Manningham with a gain of 10. Appalachian State looking to their sideline to get the defensive call. Penny, the senior, picked it up immediately. Quick snap, throw, and a 10-yard pickup. And that was a great call from Mike DeBoer up top, telling him to get into the hurry up because he and his assistants upstairs see Appalachian looking to the sidelines. Earlier, Brandon Miner banging away, trying to find a gap behind that big offensive line of Michigan. And again, Miner, the lone setback behind him. And he's back to throw. Pump fake, fired to Massey across the middle. And a first down for the Wolverines to the Appalachian State 40-yard line, a gain of 18. 
Remember the first drive of the game when we talked about how the tight end would become a more prominent member of the passing offense? Watch the route coming at you from the left side, number 83 in blue. He's covered very well by Pierre Banks, but keeps him on his back, and Henny puts it in the perfect spot. Nice job by Mike Massey, number 83. side behind Jake Long and he is tackled by the free safety Corey Lynch another pretty solid pickup for Brandon Miner a sophomore out of Richmond Virginia so he grew up not all that far from Appalachian State guarantee he has an idea he had an idea who they were Jamar Adams could tell the whole team about them based on his friendship with Leonard Love having grown up in the same town Miner three carries for 16 yards and he's still in the game they know who they are now, don't they? Minor again, and this time it is an immediate head-on play made by Cam Spear, and then he bounced off a tackle, but had help behind him, led by big number 99, the transfer from LSU, Tim Washington. He was one of the most highly recruited players in high school in the country out of Texas. Mike Hart standing on the sideline. Brandon Miner getting this series. I know Hart's in condition. They're probably just trying to give him just a little bit of a break. Penny a pump fake. And again, up top looking for Manningham in the corner. And again, spectacular coverage by Justin Rose. He's done a terrific job today on the corner, hasn't he? A little slow getting to his feet, but boy, look at what he does with Manningham. Forcing him to the sidelines to make sure that it's a difficult throw by Chad Henney. Well done. And Michigan on fourth down and five, going for it. And they don't want the, the field position is you don't want to punt it away to probably go in the end zone, and it's too far for a field goal with a brand new kicker. Lynch charging from his free safety position. Henny out of the shotgun. Quick throw as he is drilled by Lynch. And incomplete. Michigan turns it over on downs. And Lynch, the four-year starter, a fifth-year senior, came charging through untouched. And he came through on a delayed blitz from the secondary. Michigan picked up everyone else, but Lynch came from about eight yards deep, and they didn't pick him up, and he's able to get in on Henny and force the incompletion. Michigan fans are thinking, why, why there? Why did we go for it there? We, you're not desperate. It was field position that dictated the call. Too far for a field goal, too short for a punt. A good spot to go for it on fourth and five. Well, now we have... 6.53 to play until halftime. Well, Monty Edwards back on the field. And he is able to slip one tackle, but then is corralled at the 42. A late flag comes in on the near sideline. Stop made by Tim Jamison. And Taylor is the one down hurt, Terrence Taylor. Pistol ball, 15 yard first pass, number 90 on the defense. 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Terrence Taylor is hurt. Jamison whistled for the face mask. But certainly we're hoping and praying that Terrence Taylor is all right. So we'll take a timeout. Appalachian State with a seven-point lead. And Terrence Taylor being helped. In 2006, baseball enjoyed a thrilling season that couldn't have been scripted any better. The Midsummer Classic. That is a bomb. Michael Young, a hero in the ninth inning for the AL. If there's one thing that's certain, no matter how you cut it, you can't script October. Tigers in four. Two run home run Molina. The Cardinals have won the pennant. Cardinals will go in as underdogs. Wainwright trying to end the World Series. St. Louis has a World Series winner.
The drama continues this season on Fox. Well, thankfully, Terrence Taylor back on his feet and walking to the sideline. Right side of your screen, he absorbs a block there from number 67, John Holt. Right there, boom. And that's what hurt him. Jamison picks up the face mask, number 90, on the quarterback, Armonte Edwards. A 15 yard penalty, and that's first down for the Mountaineers at the Michigan 48 yard line. Richardson, pretty good running room. Inside the Michigan 45. Brandon Harrison, the junior from Dayton, Ohio. And a couple of members of that Michigan secondary hailing from the Buckeye State. Go in there and steal them away. Plenty of talent in Buckeye State. The whole country goes in. Trying You're to get right. Players. See, Edwards, you see the quarterback looking to the sidelines a lot. He often get the play and the check from the sideline. Second and five, another handoff, and another Mountaineer first down. Richardson stays on his feet, and he's to the 33-yard line. He was tripped up initially by Adams, but then is able to get a couple of more yards to gain a 10. Well, Richardson, we've not talked a great deal about him today. A senior out of Elizabethtown, a walk-on, and will become the school's all-time leading rusher. What a career. It's just a, just a terrific story. We'll get it again. Just shy of the 30-yard line, but that'll be a pickup of nearly three and a half. John, to remind you, coming up at halftime, the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report will bounce around not only the Big Ten, but have scores and highlights around the top 25. We'll recap the first half, and this is a stunning development, to say the least. The whole country's locked in on this score right now in this ball game. Edwards going to try to cut it back to the inside and spins his way inside the 30 to the 29. A big, big third down upcoming for the Wolverines on defense. You almost got the sense that, that, that Jerry Moore has been trying to lull the Michigan defensive ends to sleep by always handing the ball inside to Kevin Richardson. On that play, I think he was hoping that he had had them a little bit in a lull and tried to take Armani Edwards out wide. Michigan handled that pretty well. Five receiver set. They're four of five on third downs today. We got the check from the sidelines to make the call. Edwards going to keep it himself in another first down. Inside the 10, down to the eight yard line. You saw Edwards look to his sideline again, checking off, and he saw something there in another big game. See, they, they, they play big call plays by committee. Jerry Moore is the primary play caller, the head coach. But he also gets help from Scott Satterfield, the quarterback's coach, and Sean Elliott, the offensive line coach. From the booth, they see different things, and they send the check down. And on that play, they check to the quarterback draw with great results. First and goal for the Mountaineers. Edwards still looking over to his sideline. Now a second time. And a flag comes down. Did they get jumping? Ball start. The 67 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Good first down. The downside to that type of an offense, and we see it a lot with Peyton Manning and the Colts, is that the offensive line has to have patience, 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 and then still be aggressive. Because you're waiting for calls. You get a fake call. Then you get another call. Then you get the call to check. See, and sometimes you get a little anxious. I mean, down there in the, in the scoring zone, these guys are ready to go. They're ready to go. Sometimes you're, you're better off not checking as often and said, all right, turn them loose. Well, you know, we saw him get the penalty when they were inside the 10 the last time, gave him a little more breathing room, yeah. and they, it ended up scoring our very next play on the touchdown. And not play. insinuating that's how you want to go about your offense, first and 15. Well, they're first and goal. The option and a pitch to the sideline, Richardson, and he gets the five yards back. A tackle by Jamar Adams after a gain of seven. And this is a big time tackle by Jamar Adams. You know why? Because I think if he doesn't make this tackle, I think Richardson scores. See, if he doesn't get him right there, did you see another Michigan jersey for a while? It took a while before Graham number 37 showed up in the screen. There was space there. Second down and goal for the Mountaineers.
Blake Clark down to five. And a handoff to Richardson. And he gains maybe a yard. And Graham right there to meet him along with Will Johnson. Last year, that was the norm, trying to run the football against Michigan. They only gave up 43 yards a game running the ball. So far in the first half of, of 2007, it's almost a sigh of relief when they make a nice play on a running play. You know, there have been big, big gaps and spaces. They've run for 114 yards here in the opening half. Third down and goal. State. The second time timeout. 30 second timeout. Monty Edwards, a savvy sophomore, goes to talk it over with Jerry Moore. The big house. Capacity 107,501. How did they all find parking? This is Big Ten Country. And this is where it lives. To make sure you get the Big Ten Network, go to BigTenNetwork.com or call 866-WANT-B-1-0. We have seen a little bit of everything play calling wise by Appalachian State. A third down and goal upcoming from the Wolverines five yard line. What are you thinking here, Charles Davis, if you have to make that play call? If I'm making the play call, obviously Edwards will touch the ball as the quarterback, but I want him to have all the options. I want it to be some type of an option run pass thing so that he can make the decision about what he wants to do. The last time they were in this spot, they actually put him back in the shotgun and he threw the ball underneath on that rub route. That plays there, obviously, but I want to make sure he has every option available because that young man is magic. I'll tell you what, this Michigan team needs a stop in the worst sort of way. Mountaineers trying to go up 14 if they get into the end zone. And now Edwards will find the end zone. Touchdown, Mountaineers! This electrifying sophomore quarterback out of Greenwood, South Carolina, went 13-0 as a starter last year, did not become the starter till the third game of the season. And Michigan ran a twist inside and actually opened a gap because there's no one to fill the hole after the twist. Watch Edwards, he sees it. The blocker gets chopped, the, the rusher gets chopped down. Jamison number 90, and he hurdles in to put them up two scores. This stadium, with over 107,000 in it, you could almost hear a whisper. Capacity, 107,501. How did they all find parking? This is Big Ten country, and this is where it lives. To make sure you get the Big Ten Network, go to BigTenNetwork.com or call 866-WANT-B-1-0. Well, like any powerhouse program in Division 1A college football, you go to your season opener, you're playing at home. In this case, you're playing a small school from the mountains in North Carolina. We paid them a nice amount of money to come on in and take that meeting and go home. Absolutely, although they are back-to-back -back yep. national champions. But here we are with 2.15 to play until halftime. Our Monty Edwards perfect on the day in a 14-point lead. We've used a lot of superlatives about him already. Magic, electric. You name it. I'm going to get the thesaurus out. He could keep this up. You're not lying. But I'm about out. And a drive kick by Roush. And this is Johnny Sears. 
from the eight yard line. And he has room and is just barely tripped up by Mark Legree. So a good return by Johnny Sears. And Michigan now in the hurry up offense, one would assume, 2 8 to, uh, two eight to play until halftime. The Wolverines have all three timeouts hey, remaining. And remember, they've got the perfect guy at quarterback for this situation, Chad Henney. Been there before, he's done it. Who can forget the Michigan Penn State game two years ago? We hit Manning with the winning touchdown as time expired. And he fires to his tight end Massey and a great open field tackle to keep the clock running by Jerome Touchstone. How impressed are you, Tom, with the corners of Appalachian oh, State? Because I'm extremely impressed. Touchstone number six and Justin Rose, number 18. We're talking about, you know, one of the you know, scariest set of wide receivers of any team in college football, and they've been with them all day. Across the middle, the catch is made by Arrington, and he's to midfield. The clock continues to run after they reset the chains. 133 to play until halftime. And Penny, will they spend a timeout? No. They get the ball on the field and standing around and looking at each other, Appalachian State. Again, the short route to Arrington. He dodges a couple of tacklers, and he's to the 40. That will not be a first down, so the clock is continuing to run. For some reason, it's not running. This time this out. Is first time out. And that's why Chad Henney got to the referee quickly and said timeout. So 1-19 to play until halftime. The Wolverines down two touchdowns. Michigan with two timeouts remaining in a minute 19 to play until halftime. And they have the football on a second down and a yard at the Mountaineer 40. Plenty of time, plenty of timeouts. Terrific field position right now for Michigan. Many a pump fake. Looking for Manningham. Instead comes over the middle and the pass is broken up. But here Banks dropping back into coverage as again they were looking for Arrington. That was great bracketed coverage there by Appalachian State. Pierre Banks, number 31, running with the receiver underneath and over the top. Corey Lynch, number 47, their All-American safety. Penny tried to slide it in there. It was a nice throw, but a great breakup by the defenders. A third down and a yard. And they're going to stay on the ground with Minor. And he has a first down to the 35, so the clock stops at 109 until they reset the ball. Michigan offensively hurrying up to get to the line of scrimmage. Beauty of the college game is you get additional mini timeouts with first downs with the chain stopping. So if you move quickly on offense, you don't waste much time. Penny to Matthews. And he's to the 13-yard line. The clock continues to run. He did not get out of bounds. So it's under a minute. It does stop in a minute because it's a first down. Nice call by Mike DeBoard. What he did was he ran Mario Manningham at the top of the screen on a short route, which allowed Greg Matthews to run a one-on-one -on -one route against the safety, Corey Lynch. And Matthews won that individual battle. First down at the 11. And they hand it off to Meyer, and he is smothered by Banks. Where's Pierre Banks as a player, their top tackler from a year ago? Timeout, Michigan. So their one more timeout, timeout following that timeout. one by the Wolverines, a 30-second timeout. 51 seconds remain until halftime. How about that? The last time trailing at the half to an unranked opponent was inside the Big Ten against their rival Michigan State. 
and those you understand, rivalry games. This one, people have a hard time digesting. But you just mentioned Pierre Banks has been all over the field. We talked about being the 16th of 17 kids. He's also graduated in three years. Yep. And he's got two years of eligibility left. He's going to leave Appalachian State with two degrees and already has two national championship wins. That's quite a distinguished career with a lot of time left. That's good. That's good. That's good. There, there's college athletics in a nutshell. Yep. That's what you want to hear about. So now second down from the Mountaineers 15. Henning looks to Matthews. And he's tackled at the five. The clock continuing to run. And we're down to 42, 41, 40 seconds left. Honey getting them up to the line of scrimmage. Don't be surprised here. You got Matthews, you got Massey, number 83, the tight end, who could be a target. Henny to the corner and just throws it away. Great move by Henny. Well, he got hammered to the turf by Tony Robertson and Tim Washington. Remember earlier in the game, I asked the question about the pass rush of Appalachian State. Would they be able to get pressure on Chad Henney? They kept the tight end Massey in the game, and there's still pressure. And on fourth down now, they have to kick a field goal following that incompleted pass. And everyone's upset and wanted them to go for it. There's some indecision. Who's in, who's out on the kick team? And they're pretty much out of it. Out of time. I mean, they're in a big tough shape on the timeout situation. Well, the holder looking in. Mesco about spending a timeout because he knew they were a man short of that man is Mike Carter. Third and final timeout. This is the 32nd timeout. Well, you're talking about a senior All-American in Hart and is not on the field. They have to spend a timeout. Actually, what happened on it was it wasn't Mike Hart. Mike ran out late to try and help. But I looked out and the guy who got confused was Jason Ollis, uh, was it Jason Ollis Navage? No, excuse me, Greg Banks, number 92. Yep. He so was the guy got confused. Hart ran out to try and cover yep. for him, and it was too late. They'd already called the timeout. That's more like Mike yeah. Hart. Yeah. Always in the Time game. Trying to cover for his yep. guy. So yeah. now the field goal from 13 yards out for Jim Gell, who has not kicked a field goal in a real game since high school in 2003. And bangs it right down the middle. You know he had the butterflies waiting until the final 18 seconds of a half to finally get a chance to get a field goal try. And the crowd here at Michigan booing the Wolverines. I don't understand that part. There's no reason to boo getting the field goal. It was the right call because they were out there down, down in that situation. It was the right call to get because of down and distance. Well, then he's been under fire a lot today since that first drive of the game. And we asked the question earlier, can they get pressure? That one was a blocking assignment missed. Since then, it's just been great pressure by the Mountaineers. Pierre Banks, number 31. Look at Roman, number 40, chasing him down. He's, been, he's had to move, and Chad Henney said he spent a lot of time this summer working on his movement in and out of the pocket. I don't think he expected today to try to put, to have to put that to so much use in game one. That's not what you had any work on it for. I think he was thinking later in the schedule, but boy, is he getting a workout today trying to use his newfound elusiveness. And I don't think you can say enough about the, you know, not only the, the, the pass pressure, but the pass coverage. Mario Manningham has caught one pass for three yards in the first half of this game. And he's the big play guy. He's the guy last year averaged nearly 20 yards per okay. catch when healthy. Again, coming out the Buffalo Wild Division. Wings halftime report. The Repson and Company standing by from Chicago, the home of the Big Ten Network. Coco Hillary and Cortez Gilbert waiting back. There are 16 seconds remaining here until halftime. Little short kick, and Hillary coming up to get it from the front. He dropped it, and he will just take a knee. Why well, take the chance? I think it's a great move. Jerry Moore and the special teams guys, well coached. We're not going to cost, cost ourselves anything now. We're up 28-17. Let's not give them any momentum to start the second half. Avoid 
Carr extremely relaxed yesterday when we had a chance to sit down and visit with him. A, a wonderful visit with both of these schools. But he doesn't look very happy right now. No, and I think that a lot of people in the stands are saying, oh, I'd go in there and I'd just rip these guys, blah, blah, blah. I don't think Roy Carr and the staff are going to do that. They realize that they've taken a heck of a punch in the first half. They've got to bring them back emotionally and mentally. And if they rip them, I don't think that's going to do it. So I think he's going to go down and say, okay, guys, we've got a whole other half to play. Well, the story in the first half of this is on Monty Edwards. Totally. I mean, him and the, and, and the spread offense that Michigan has not been able to solve. And the defense. Let's send it downstairs to you, Carissa Thompson. Well, we understand that uh, Coach Carr uh, has decided to get his team in the locker room in a hurry and will not be joining us here at halftime. Here at Michigan Stadium, everybody goes up into the same tunnel, so things can get bottled up. But boy, in a huge rivalry game, how about the Buckeyes and the Wolverines walking up there together? You tell you, if they call me to work security that game, I'm not answering the phone. <laughs> That's a, that's a full-time job right there to try and keep those, that emotion apart and, and, you know, orderly in the tunnel. That's tough to do. So 28-17 at halftime. Appalachian State in front. And we will be along with the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report right after these messages. Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be here. Welcome to those of you watching the games in Ann Arbor and State College. This is the Buffalo Wild Wings Halftime Report. Great to have you with us on the Big Ten Network. Dave Revson, Jerry DiNardo, and Howard Griffith. And a bit of a surprise developing at the Big House. Of course, Appalachian State, as everyone knows, two straight 1AA National Championships coming in. But in those two years, they played three Division 1A opponents and had been outscored 83-18. to So it didn't figure to give the Wolverines all that much of a problem, but... Well, we kind of figured wrong. Let's check out the highlights here. Starting in the first quarter, appropriately enough, from the 37, it's Mike Hart finding a big hole. Well, you expect to get Mike Hart going in this game. He got going often early. 
Now on first and goal after the hard run. If it worked there, why wouldn't it work again? And it does. Seven nothing Michigan is hard plows into the end zone this one basically going according to the script but at this point it's not 14 all here in the second corner Armani Edwards Dexter Jackson into the end zone for Appalachian State 21 14 Mountaineers Edwards 7 of 7 129 yards three TDs in the first half as here he keeps it himself Edwards does into the end zone 28 17 as Michigan did add a late field goal just before the half they were down 28 to 14 What's going on here, Jerry? Well, I'd say first adjustment has to be made is, is on defense. It, it looks like they're getting picked in the secondary. They're playing too much man coverage with a decide play. You have a mobile quarterback. It just looks like the secondary of Michigan is out of position. On, on offense, when Henny's gone back a couple times, he's been under a little bit of duress. They've got to get that resolved. The one good thing Michigan's doing, which I think will reap benefits the second half, is they're not afraid to throw the deep ball. They need to continue to throw the deep ball. You're right. And when they, rook, when they start to roll Henny out to the right, where that pressure is coming from is the right side. When we were there, they talked about being able to shore up that right side. Right now, they're not playing as well as they need to. Well, they hope this would be a national championship season in Ann Arbor. This is not the way to start it. Well, you may have heard me say this before. It's a 60-minute game. Oh, is it? Yeah, they have a, there's another half to play. Okay. Really, Michigan kicking a field goal at the end, that, that's going to help them a little bit. I mean, you have to... A little momentum. Yeah, little I mean, effort. you have to have something at halftime positive to say. I mean, you just can't go in there and totally rant and rave. you got to have a little bit of positive. Ohio That's State all <laughs> also facing a 1AA opponent in Youngstown State. I don't think they're really going to accentuate the positive at halftime. <laughs> Something tells me. Ohio State players getting fired up for this one, and early on they look pretty good. Todd Beckman, Dane Sonsenbacher, four-yard touchdown strike. Buckeyes just like that on top, 7-0. Second quarter, same score. Beanie Wells plows in from the one-yard line. Buckeyes on top, 14-0. And as we check it out right now, it has gone to the half 21 to 3, Ohio State. Meanwhile, Florida International and Penn State, Anthony Morelli, corner of the end zone, Terrell Golden. Penn State up 7 0 early on a team that was winless last year. Morelli here to Mickey Schuler. Penn State on top 14 to nothing at that point. They have added 10 more. It's 24 0 there at the half in State College. Michigan State and Alabama Birmingham and Mark D'Antonio's debut going about as well as it possibly could. J.U. Colkrick having a huge first half. He really scared me. He had a tremendous job of making some big plays, running the ball downhill, something that Michigan State really wanted to emphasize in this particular game, bring the power running game back. Well, he had four touchdowns in the first half. Howard has the NCAA record with eight. Wants him to call off the dogs. <laughs> Ryan Hoyer there to Devin Thomas, 28-0 Michigan State's 45-3 Michigan State. Northwestern and Northeastern, second year for Pat Fitzgerald at the helm of the Wildcats. And on the opening drive, the Cats get it into the end zone. C.J. Bache diving and scoring, 7-0 Wildcats. Bache has been doing a good job, has been under some pressure early, but he's managed to stay in the pocket and deliver the football. They're still not running the ball enough in the first half against North Northeastern. I'd like to see Sutton get going a little bit more. Yeah, they had real trouble running the ball early last year with Tyrell Sutton. A lot of that had to do with the fact they had the running quarterbacks in there, but you're right. They haven't gotten the right. ball a whole lot to Sutton here, and Bache is not really a running quarterback. All right, second half for Michigan. What are we going to see? You're going to see more conservative coverage on, on defense. You're going to see them uh, continue to run the football. They did, a, they did a fair enough job running the football, and they're going to stay and try to hit a big one. They need to keep Appalachian State on their heels. Well, I, I like to continue to see Minor running the ball, who came in to spell Hart in that situation. And defensively, what Ron English has been preaching to these guys, do your job, do your assignment. I want to see more assignments. Well, we'll see if the lessons were learned in the first half or if it's going to take until... Next week for the lessons to be learned. Wolverines fans obviously hoping for the former is high hopes for Michigan, but uh, hasn't gone so well in the first half. We'll get you ready for the evening games coming up next. The Big Ten Network is brought to you by Yield Guard VT Triple, the yield protection system. By Cooper Tires. Don't give up a thing. And by the new Ranger RZR, see it up close at your local Polaris Ranger dealer. Let's send it downstairs to Carissa Thompson. Co Coach, your team has managed to silence 100,000.
thousand people. Your team is up 28 to 17. What do you do in the second half to keep them calm and finish this thing out? Well, we're going to catch the, the best that the Big Ten's got. The, best, the way they would play against Ohio State, Notre Dame, Rose Bowl. That's the way they'll play the second half. And we got to match up with it. We just, you know, we feel like we're in good condition. It's good and hot. We like that. I like the way our team's playing. And you can't ask for anything any better than that. They're playing hard, and uh, we're enjoying the moment right now. We're just going to try to stretch that moment another 30 minutes. Absolutely. I think we should have a write in for Armani Edwards for Heisman. Congratulations, Thank Coach. You. Keep it up. Thank Back up to you guys. Team. Well, you heard Coach, our team, and he talked about the heat, you know, and the one thing he talked over and over again was how hard his team practices. They've had transfers come in from other big Division 1A schools team and say in particular. nobody practices like this team. Tempo, all the time in practice. They have to get after it. Mike Hart exercising on the bike. I wonder if there's something going on with him. He hasn't played the last few series of this ball game, so you just wonder about him. But here's the key for me, Tom. Appalachian State gets the ball to start the second half. There's been no more of important defensive series for Michigan since last year, Ohio State, USC, than this one coming up right now. Fielding at the five is Coco Hillary, and he's out across the 25 to the 30, the 35, and the 37 yard line. This kickoff rule is going to be a nightmare for defensive-minded coaches this year. We're seeing evidence of it already. Starting field position, 35 and beyond most of today. 31-yard return for the former high school quarterback. He was supposed to be the quarterback, or possibly a quarterback last year. He was yep. actually ahead of Armonte Edwards on the depth chart for a long time before Edwards pulled the even, and then they decided to make the move and move Hillary out the wide receiver. So here comes Armonte Edwards. You can't play better than he did in the first half. <laughs> no. <laughs> What's that quarterback rated? Perfect. <laughs> Edwards under pressure dumps it off to Richardson Michigan read it beautifully defensively and a big stop by Brandon Engelman the fifth year senior Crable applying the pressure on Edwards a loss of four. I would not be surprised here if Ron English the defensive coordinator in the second half makes this adjustment and that is on pass rush you beat the guy in front of you. They did a lot of twisting and stunting and stemming in the first half and it seemed to create a few gaps for Appalachian State. Let's see if they just say athlete to athlete you go get that guy. Intercepted. First mistake of the day made by Edwards. And for the first time in a long while, the Michigan faithful are standing and cheering. First two plays of this last series with a straight pass rush by the defensive line. And this was just a bad throw by Armonte Edwards. I think he thought that Corman was looping out when Corman sat down on the route. See, he thought Corman was breaking to the sideline on an out route. And the beneficiary, number 14, Morgan Trent. And to start the second half, Brandon Miner was in the backfield. Again, not Mike Hart. And they hand it off. And a big gain by Miner. Inside the 30 to the 26-yard line. Miner's best game last year, 108 yards in a victory over Ball State. That was a tight one. Oh, man, that was a, hey, that one had the people sitting on the edge of their seats here, a max score. But if I'm Michigan right now, if I'm Mike DeBoer, you know what I'm thinking? A little more dispatch in and out of the huddle. I want to ride this momentum that they built up to start the second half. Big play on first down. Come right back out. Again, it's Miner. And Pierre Banks takes a stiff arm and stays with him. A good play by Banks, and he's fired up. So that almost take like a little bit of a mini hurry up. In and out of the huddle. Right out. Bang, bang, bang. We'll see what we can get done. But what is going on with Mike Hart? Finished fifth last year in the Heisman balloting. I think he's hurt. First team preseason All-American. Well, he's standing there with a helmet on as he if to say, played. I won in the game. But he hasn't played a bunch of series, and he was the last guy out of the locker room after the half. And I thought I saw a little hitch in his good luck. We saw him on the bike exercise and tried to loosen up his legs. And now Massey will tie it in. And Henny to throw. Screen. Setting up the screen. And batted into the air and nearly intercepted. Boy, Jock Roman and Pierre Banks are all over the field. And a big fella getting up. 
And number 98, Anthony Williams. And Chad Henney had words for Brandon Miner after this play. Did not run the screen very well at all. He put himself in the same spot as his offensive lineman blocking for him. And after the play, I saw Henney counseling him about, hey, you've got to be over here so we have some space. Third down and eight. They need to get to the 17 to move the chains. And a short drop, incomplete. He had an eye on Matthews, so the Wolverines decision time. Will they go for it on fourth down? Nope, they'll send up the field goal team. I think it's the right call. Plenty of time left, still 28-17. We just started the third quarter. While it's disappointing, you don't turn down an opportunity for points because your ego is hurt. Gingell kicked his first collegiate field goal in the final seconds of the opening half. This one a, certainly a bigger challenge. It'll come from, let's call it the 43-yard line, or the 33, so a 43-yard kick. From the 33-yard line. And it's good. Well done by Gingell. So the Wolverines take advantage of the interception and claw to within eight. Remember the anticipation of hearing the ice cream truck? In Poland, Cargill borrowed the idea for something quite different. Small Polish farms had difficulty getting affordable feed for their smaller herds of animals. So Cargill created a way to bring the feed directly to them on musical delivery trucks, selling a few bags per visit. Keeping the small farmers competitive and their animals happier. This is how Cargill works with customers the big house capacity 107,501 how do they all find parking this is Big Ten country and this is where it lives to make sure you get the Big Ten Network go to Big Ten Network.com or call 866-WANT-B-1-0 continues to get some exercise on the bicycle because he's not getting any on the field. Let's check in with Carissa Thompson. As you just mentioned, Tom, Mike is getting some work over there on the bike when walking by. I asked him, are you all right? And he shook his head yes. That's, that's interesting to me, Carissa, because yep. a lot of the time a guy will tell you he's okay. I'm having a tough time understanding if he's okay. He hasn't played in how many series now? It's been a while. That's my part. So great stuff from Carissa down along the Wolverine sideline. The ball bobbled momentarily by Hillary, but not a bad return out to the 24-yard line. So now all of a sudden, Armonte Edwards blinks for the first time today on the last series of Appalachian State. His team has an eight-point lead. A little better than two minutes into the second half. Roy Carr trying to encourage his defense. His defense made a stop with the pick the last time by Trent. The Holiday Inn Express scoring drive, the 42-yard field goal for Gingell. Last year, Amante Everett showed an amazing ability to come back after mistakes with big plays. Richardson running behind blockers and a good gain out across the 31-yard line. 
Brandon Harrison again on the stop. Michigan's got to have that same snap and effort they had on the first defensive series. Good job blocking up front. That was a nice block by number 67, John Holt. For Appalachian State and the rest of his cohorts up front. Richardson wanting the face mask, and the carry is good enough for another first down. So on uh, second and three, Johnson the tackle, but Richardson plows ahead. Michigan has to stiffen up front with their defensive line. They're finding just enough of a crease up front to find room to run. Now they're spreading them out again with the five wide receivers. Edwards still looking over. And he'll keep it himself. And again, big running room for Armonte Edwards. That play has been there every time they've called it. That'll be an 11 yard gain for Edwards. They move the chain out to the 45 yard line. And another first down for Appalachian State. A lot of times with the spread, you get those good line splits, which forces the defense to widen out to adjust, and you create the natural seams and gaps for a darter like Edwards to find. I think that's TJ Corman, junior wide receiver out of Beaufort, North Carolina. Ran a great rub route in the first half. Can you tell a former defensive back the way I say rub? Oh, yeah. Can you tell that sticks in my crawl? I know bit? it does. You've been burned on it enough times. But well, they didn't need to run a rub on me. <laughs> they just ran by me. <laughs> well, Corman able to walk off. Hopefully he's okay. And right back at it is Armonte Edwards. Throw to Coco Hillary. Got a pretty good block and then steps in between Michigan defenders. And another first down to the Wolverine 41, a gain of 13. Got a good block from Batashan. If you're going to run this play, you run it to your best blocking wide receiver side. And that's exactly what they did. Hans Batashan, number three, does a great job just keeping Brandon Harrison, number 27, occupied. Turns into a big gainer for Coco Hillary. And again, the same play the other way. And read beautifully by the corner coming up to make the tackle. We will have the interception the last series, Morgan Trent out of San Diego, California. And on that play, Brandon Harrison actually got the best of Hans Badashan. Because on that play, Badashan tried to go low and cut him. Harrison just stepped right over him and was right in the vicinity as Trent made the play. They are hoping and waiting for Trent to become a great player. They think he has all the talent in the world. They're worried a little bit about his confidence. They won't tell you that. But the way it ended last year, they need him to have big plays to be, have positive feelings about everything that he does on the field. Now a little bit of option. And stepping up to keep the football. Here's Edwards, and it'll bring up third down and 10, an early huge play for the Michigan defense. And the good thing, the good thing there that happened for the, for the Wolverines was when the hole opened, it actually closed quickly this time. The pursuit got there. The Mountaineers have cashed in on six of seven third down conversions today. The fresh pass rushers on the field, Tom, for Michigan. Boy clock now down to seven. Here they come after Edwards. Steps up, throws to Hillary to the 15-yard line. Twenty seven yard gain and how about the quarterback Armonte Edwards recognizing and picking up the blitz. He's listed as six feet one hundred and seventy five pounds and stays in there and delivers the ball. A lot of the times in offenses uh, Tom the quarterback is his own blitz control meaning if he sees blitz he knows he has to take the hit no problem he has to deliver the football Edwards has done that today. First down at the Wolverines 14 back on the ground and again it is Richardson with no room to run. Will Johnson had help from others along the Michigan defensive front. So Terrence Taylor's coming back on the field for Michigan. Got a blue wrap on his leg. Remember in the first half he got knocked off the field had to be helped off the field after a big hit. He's now back in the game. Second and ten for Appalachian State. 
See, that's why you used to keep the two point stance, Tom, so the right was there they can move. They just get it off. And a fake to Richardson. And Edwards bottled up. Maybe, maybe a yard. <laughs> Was that one of the prettiest maybe a yard runs you've seen? Yeah. There's two guys who had clean shots that he had missed. Sean Crable, number two, was the first guy. And if you make Sean Crable miss, you've done you've done some good work. There's Crable. Look at that. And Crable's very agile. Number 37, Chris Graham also missed. OBSA coming in to finally get him down. Third down and eight. Will they come after him again here, the Michigan defense? They got burned the last time. I think that they're going to rush and try and spy on all these receivers. There they do come. They're loaded up. And Edwards finds an open receiver, and he dropped the football to freshman Brian Quick. To the, to the right side of the screen, the reason that he was so open. That's Quick, number eight, Brian Quick. He's a true freshman who didn't play much football in high school. Was there was a mistake in the secondary. Jamar Adams, number 22, and Johnny Sears, number 25, both guarded the same man. That left Quick wide open, and the true freshman dropped a sure touchdown pass. Well, now Julian Roush will try from 31 yards out. And it is good. But Brian Quick, and, and look at the coaching staff. They said they're so impressed with him since he set foot on campus in the summer. Trying to keep his head in the game. It's an 11 points game. The big house. Capacity, 107,501. How did they all find parking? This is Big Ten country, and this is where it lives. To make sure you get the Big Ten Network, go to BigTenNetwork.com or call 866-WANT-B-1-0. They are the Big Ten's greatest games. Tuesday, get ready for a colossal doubleheader. First, the Big Ten titles on the line at the Horseshoe as undefeated Michigan clashes with unbeaten Ohio State in a nail-biter from last season. Then, we're going back to 1999 as Minnesota's out to spoil Penn State's season with a shocking upset. The Big Ten's Greatest Games, Tuesday at 6 Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network. For those who can't turn it off, now there's a place where you can always turn it on. This is Big Ten Country. Even the first day I met Coach, he made me feel like I could do better. Uh, you can do better. If you believe in me. I hated that. Feeling like the best I could do would only last one day. But I stuck with it. Well, actually, he stuck with me. When I finally did win, he wasn't surprised. I knew you had it in you. Believing. Pass it on. You did real good. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Big Ten tonight. Only on the Big Ten Network. 31-20 Appalachian State on the road in Ann Arbor with 8.17 to play in the third quarter. Well, they talked so much, people wondered about this Michigan defense before this game began, before this season began, losing seven outstanding starters from a dynamite defense a year ago. Now, Appalachian State is not your normal kind of team to try and defend. No, when you're walking about spread offense with the type of athletes that Appalachian State possesses, it's very difficult. And then you put in the principles of a quarterback like Armonte Edwards, who can run it, throw it, option you, make all the moves necessary, and has a coolness in the pocket. 
that is amazing. Sears and Miner will wait to kick. Julian Roush has done an outstanding job kicking the football deep today. And this one no different. Bobbling the ball and having to bring it out is Sears. And he is dropped at the 10-yard line. Frey, how about B.J. Frazier on this cut kick coverage for Appalachian State, guys? The bobble, and it came into the field of play, so he had to bring it out. Excuse me, let me take that back. His name is Smith on the back. I might, on my roster, I've got B.J. Frazier yeah. for that number. So my apologies to the We run into our Smith first family. double number of the exactly. day. Exactly. I apologize to the Smith family. Terrific play by your son. And now Michigan, unbelievable. Oh, Michigan. To call a timeout. A 30-second timeout. So we'll do it with them. 30-second. No, we're going to keep it right here. Well, let's take a look while we have a moment. We were talking about defenses here a second ago. Now let's talk our VT. Yes, is the yield guard VT triple. <laughs> How about that? Defensive and these are guys the you think could be the uh, Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah, well, James Laurinaitis, that's no surprise, is it? No. Nope. I mean, I can pick that. That's pretty simple. One of the best linebackers in the country last year as a sophomore. Jay Lehman, you may not hear much about him because he's played at Illinois and haven't won very many games. He's a tackling machine. Dan Connor will be the next All-American at linebacker U. And Vernon Golston, I'm so impressed by him. We'll see him next week. When we go to Ohio State, when they take on Akron, so versatile, so good. First down throw by Henny is a short one. First touch today by Moundros. And the crowd booing here in Ann Arbor. They're beyond restless, aren't they? I mean, they are really upset. They're not just upset, they're scared. I mean, because when you, you come into this season with high hopes, preseason top five team, and you're playing a, a, a football championship subdivision, FCS, formerly one double-A team, you don't care how good they are, you expect to win and win impressively. Now you're in danger of being upset at home. And they fire out to Manningham. That is only his second catch all day. And now he's coming back the other way, and look out. But great closure defensively, and again, it's Wose. How many times have we called his name today? Number 18, along with flying across the field by Jock Roman, the middle linebacker. Partner, I love the observation because it would have been very easy for Justin Wose and the rest of the Appalachian State defenders to get out of their lanes in their pursuit of Mario Manningham. But they stayed at home. They kept leverage. And so what looked like was potentially a huge play turned into a six-yard gain, even with Chad Henney throwing a block in the backfield. I was going to say the only reason they got a six-yard gain was because of the block by the quarterback. So now a third down and three for Michigan. Miner again in the backfield. No Mike Hart so far here in the second half. And looking around. And a throw and the catch made by Matthews. And that's good enough for a first down to the 25-yard line. You just mentioned Mike Hart, Tom, and I know what he told our colleague Carissa, Carissa Thompson, that he's not hurt. I don't believe it. That's a nice throw and catch there because Chad Henley actually threw it to the open spot to hit, to hit his receiver, Greg Matthews. He moved him to the spot where Matthews only could make the catch. Fifth catch of the day for Matthews, and here is Brandon Miner, who is playing, of course, for the... All-American candidate Mike Hart. I mean, all we can do is ask. All we can do is know? ask, and he and can Carissa answer. did, and then he answered, and he said, "I'm okay." And that's, and I understand that. He's, I think he's a competitor. I'm not doubting his sincerity that he thinks he's okay, but I don't think there's any reason Mike Hart's not in the game if he's not okay. There's just no way. No well, Hart standing there, uh, talking things over. On the Michigan sideline, second down and four, and again, it's Miner, and the ball is loose. And it looks like Appalachian State has recovered, and that is because they have. So with Mike Hart on the bench, 
getting his first significant playing time, even going back to last year as minor, and he gives up the football. Look like right there, number 40, the middle linebacker, Jock Roman, strips the ball free, and the playmaker all day long, Pierre Banks, falls on the fumble. They're inside the 30-yard line of Michigan. And remember this, Mike Hart, one official fumble in his college career. 786 touches coming into today. One official fumble. He never turns the ball over. Nope, and he's encouraging his teammates. Well, what, what a gamer Hart is. Oh, I mean, you say that, he's not in the game. And he's still with him. This guy. That's why he's a captain. Take him on your team all day, every day. You go big right here, Tom. Richardson. Just uh, really stepping behind some of his offensive linemen is able to stick his nose forward and get maybe a yard or two. Well, here we are, Charles. We're closing in now under seven minutes in the third quarter. We know what Appalachian State is all about. We heard about it. Now we're seeing it. Do you think they start getting more conservative? I think that Jerry Moore's been around enough to have had too many close calls. I think that he's going to continue to run offense at this stage. They don't go conservative until the score is like this and we're midway through the fourth quarter. Now you continue to run your offense because you can't throttle back. He's thoroughbred to a wide open right now. Edwards will keep it himself and breaks one tackle. And then it's smothered at the 25-yard line. Let's be honest about it. You're having a hard time remembering the last time this Michigan defense stopped Appalachian State on offense in this game. Were it not for a drop touchdown a short while ago, you tack on four right now right. to the Mountaineer lead. Exactly. And, and here's, here's the other thing to remember, too. As this game continues to progress and Michigan keeps looking up at the scoreboard, it makes it even harder to come back because you're not worried about playing. You're worried about time leaking away from you. Third and seven. Foreman, who left a short while ago, injured, is back in the game. He was in motion. And down goes Edwards. Did not try and force it. Good pass rush and good coverage by the Wolverines. Jamison the sack. And that's a big play defensively for the Wolverines because at this stage, they can only give, if you're going to give up points, it has to be threes. You can't give up sixes. So here, another coverage sack for the Wolverines. Nowhere to go with the ball. And I loved your point. He didn't force anything. He took care of the football, took out of Monty Edwards, and gave themselves a shot, gave his team a shot at a field goal. A 46-yard try by Roush. That matches his career long, or his season long last year. His career long is 48 yards. Roush puts a leg on it, and it draws back off the upright. He had enough distance. So Michigan. Able to stop Appalachian State for the first time in recent memory. 4.46 to go in the third. The Mountaineers lead the Wolverines 31-20. Welcome to Ranger Country, where the redesigned Polaris Ranger with electronic fuel injection outruns, outcarries, outhauls, outpulls, and outrides every utility vehicle out there. The Polaris Ranger with electronic fuel injection. Polaris Ranger. Hardest working, smoothest riding. For proof, go to PolarisIndustries.com. I'd like a personal checking account. Well, I'm all ears. What's your name? Uh, Rob. Rob Lee. All right, Bill, can I call you Willie? Emma, how about a cup of coffee for Frank here? Rob. I heard that. You married Ernesto? No. A little something for the missus. Here's your milkshake, Kenny. Rob. Uh -huh. Personal checking at other banks isn't always personal. I need you here, Teddy. U.S. bank checking is built around you with interest on balances, free internet bill pay, free ATMs, and the most reward choices, even cash back. U.S. bank, five-star service guaranteed. How many stars does your bank have? Bye, Murray. Rob. The big house. Capacity. 107,501. How did they all find parking? This is Big Ten country. And this is where it lives. To make sure you get the Big Ten Network, go to BigTenNetwork.com or call 866-WANT-B-1-0. They are the Big Ten.
Ten's greatest games. Tuesday, get ready for a colossal doubleheader. First, the Big Ten titles on the line at the Horseshoe as undefeated Michigan clashes with unbeaten Ohio State in a nail-biter from last season. Then, we're going back to 1999 as Minnesota's out to spoil Penn State's season with a shocking upset. The Big Ten's greatest games, Tuesday at 6 Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network. Thirty-one twenty, and the crowd standing and cheering as bounding off the sideline. One of the Michigan Tri Captains, Mike Hart, is back in a game. Next week we look ahead. You and I will be in Columbus at the Horseshoe, yes, Akron sir. against Ohio State, and the rest of our lineup here on the Big Ten Network. How about that Syracuse Iowa game? Syracuse had a tough time last night, but Iowa had to go into overtime to beat them last year. And he looking for a bundle. Manningham is there, and he overthrows him. For the first time all day today, Manningham beat Wose down the sideline. Remember earlier in the game when he needed a little more air under the ball, and Wose came back and knocked it away? This time, he had a little too much air under the ball, because if he hits it just right, Manningham is running, and, and the crowd down there at the end of the field is, is hugging him. Because that's exactly right. He finally got away from Wose and had him clearly beat. 4.38 to play in the third quarter in front of better than 107,000 at the Big House, Michigan Stadium, on the campus of the University of Michigan. And the Appalachian State Mountaineers hold an 11-point lead. Penny in trouble, escapes a sack, and then throws it behind. Massey is tight end. Under heavy pressure again by Tim Washington. And again, that's a young man who transferred from LSU. And is just now learning how to get the tempo in order to get himself to, ready to play at Appalachian State. A lot of guys, they transfer back from the football bowl subdivision, FBS, down to the FCS, football championship subdivision. They think it's going to be easy. You know, oh, I can go play. But now they have to learn how to get it done. So now we've got a third and long for Michigan. Third and ten. And Chad Henney on the last play showed his elusiveness in the pocket, but every now and then he needs to dart upfield and just gain some yardage. Michigan five of ten on third down today. Henney fires to the far side, too tall for Massey. Double covered was a tight end, and that's where Henney threw the football. And he was locked on him from the snap of the football. I never saw his head move or any type of, of turn. Their clear game was Pierre Banks, number 31 underneath. And Corey Lynch, number 47, over the top. That bracket coverage we've seen. But the ball was thrown a little bit outside. He put it in the right slot, just a little bit too wide for Massey to take the haul in. Zoltan Mesko to punt from his own 15-yard line. And the Dexter Jackson, we know what kind of speed he has. We've seen it already today. We'll field it on a bounce. Nope, we'll let it go. Got to pick that one up. And that's what his coach is going to tell him. You've got to go and get it. Whether you call fair catch or whatever, you can't let a ball bounce and gain that kind of yardage. That's the hidden yardage that you don't see that changes field position. Well, we have football on this Saturday. Tomorrow, two of the nation's best men's soccer programs will square off. The Bruins of UCLA are in Bloomington to take on the Indiana Hoosiers. That'll get underway tomorrow at 2 o'clock Eastern on the Big Ten Network. Those are two of the traditional powers in the world of college soccer colliding right here on the Big Ten Network. So now Edwards out of the shotgun. Again, we'll hand it off to Richardson, and he's stifled for a gain of a yard. We just received it. A very nice note. Apparently, everybody in town is hanging out in one place and watching us today on Direct TV down in Boone, North Carolina. And in fact, it is so crowded by order of the fire marshal, no one else is allowed to come in to watch this game. <laughs> so for all of you down there in Boone, North Carolina, thank and we you. thank Mike Flynn for delivering that note. Thanks for being with us. Mike's been terrific to work with the SID at Appalachian State. Looks like a timeout from Edwards. And that'll be the first spin here in the Timeout, Appalachian State. So 30 second timeout. So Carissa told us that most people weren't at home. They all came here. So whoever was left, <laughs> they're jamming the place and no one else could get in.
And if you're watching from somewhere else and you're thinking about going down there, <laughs> forget it. The big house. Capacity, 107,501. How did they all find parking? This is Big Ten country, and this is where it lives. To make sure you get the Big Ten Network, go to BigTenNetwork.com or call 866-WANT-B-1-0. Well, in Boone, North Carolina, they love that man and have for nearly 20 years. Jerry Moore, who, yes, a Texan born and raised, but he calls himself an Appalachian man now. 335 to play in the third quarter. Second down and 10 for Edwards. And the handoff to Richardson, and he breaks through. And has a first down all the way out to the 31 yard line. A gain of 15 by Richardson, who's closing in on a 100 yard rushing day. Look at the trap. This is the old Washington Redskins counter tray. John Holt, number 67. Jonathan Bischke, number 72. Brett Urban, number 57, all cleaned up with Holt and Bischke pulling from the opposite side to create the hole in the lane for Richardson. And again, they're going to stay on the ground and try to chew up some of this time. Are they getting more conservative? Yes, they are. But, but every we're now they... getting to three minutes here in the third quarter. And here's the, op here's the flip side of it. While it appears conservative, we've seen them run this play all day long, one or two yards sometimes, and then they come back with something similar, and it pops. Like so, two plays so, ago. So, so if you're doing that, people can talk about being conservative. They've been doing that the whole game. Conservatives only get one or two yards. When it pops, that's a heck of a call, Jerry Moore. <laughs> oh, and by the way, there are five wide receivers now here on second deck. Which means that if Edwards pulls it down, he usually finds it a lane. Edwards in trouble, and the ball is loose, and the Wolverines have recovered. It looked like Crable stripped it, and John Thompson pounced on it. A huge play for Michigan. John Crable's speed we spotlighted at the top of the ball game. He's number two. And he gets there and starts to right there. Wraps it up, strips the ball free. John Thompson, his first time starting middle linebacker, one of the hardest hitters on the team, handles the cleanup of the ball on the ground. Edwards hasn't made very many errors, but this is a big one that Michigan has to capitalize on here. It's got to be six points for the Wolverines. Yep. Mike Hart is in the backfield. They take over at the Mountaineers 31-yard line. Penny. Short drop in and out of the hands of Arrington. And a few extra pushing and shoving going on. Hart getting locked up on the far side with Gary Therrington. Hey, we've seen that a bunch of times before when the underdog has the decided advantage on the team, you know, the, on the favorite. Things get a little chippier, don't they? The underdog feels a little more expansive, feels good about, it, about itself. Home team. A little angry. Well, the big boys don't like it. No, no. Penny again, a short drop, and again the slant, and this time Arrington hangs on. And that'll take it down to the 24-yard line. We'll say right there, but that's a tough play to defend. A big third down upcoming yet again for the Wolverines offense. They had to make a field goal try you may remember their last possession the Cargill passing combination Matthews has been his favorite target today and they said he's had a great fall camp and I'm, I'm saying it right now the Michigan Wolverines are in two down territory I don't think they're thinking field goal at all here and Hart is out of the game Miner is in the game and that is Miner and he slips his way inside the 20 down to the 15 they'll move the chain I'm wondering this I'm wondering this Tom and you saw Miner, who had fumbled previously, had trouble there on the exchange, you know, the way he was moving around like a loaf of bread. I wonder if Mike Hart is coming in the game in pass situation because of his great pass protection. Because he doesn't look like they're, they're not looking to hand him the no. football. So he's doing what he can. Miner, 42 yards in the day with 11 carries. 
But I don't think Mike Hart is the run threat now. And he makes a liar of me. <laughs> well, he's able to stay on his feet and plows forward to the 10-yard line. That is his first time in quite some time. The only reason I, the only reason I even thought that was on the key third down play. They substituted for him, you know? And Miner came in and carried the yep. football. So it made me think, hold on a second. You got the whole time, guy's going to be a big all time leading rusher. He's not touching it. But that's good coaching, though, yeah. right there. I mean, you know, the, the opposition might be picking up on that. That's Hart's first carry of the second half. Under a minute here to go in the third quarter. And Hart will get it yet again. He covers up the football better than any back in the country. And he has a first down inside the five. First and goal, Michigan. Now this looks more like the first drive of the game. Look at them in the zone blocking. Everyone steps to the right, finds a person, and gets into the gap and, put, and puts a hat on a hat. And when you put a hat on a hat and Mike Hart finds a seam, good things happen. And look how he keeps moving the pile forward. First and goal. Hart again. And into the end zone is Mike Hart. The great desire, the great leadership of Mike Hart. He just ran right through Anthony Williams and Jock Roman and leaps into the end zone. I've been wrong so many times, so what's another one, right? <laughs> Mike Hart must not be hurt. So the question comes back, how many series did he not play and why? I, I can't help but have to ask that question. That's Mike Hart. There's no question about it. Key situation, you give him the ball. So now they're going for two to try to get within a field goal. They're down by five, and Hart is in the backfield, and he's checking off in the line of scrimmage in a four-receiver set. And he bobbles the ball and will not get in. That's a big stop right there by Appalachian State. I don't know if they so much stopped him as again Michigan shoots itself in the foot. But the Wolverines get the touchdown by their leader Hart and trail now by five. The big house. Capacity. 107,501. How do they all find parking? This is Big Ten country, and this is where it lives. To make sure you get the Big Ten Network, go to BigTenNetwork.com or call 866-WANT-B-1-0. They are the Big Ten's greatest games. Tuesday, get ready for a colossal doubleheader. First, the Big Ten titles on the line at the Horseshoe as undefeated Michigan clashes with unbeaten Ohio State in a nail-biter from last season. Then, we're going back to 1999 as Minnesota's out to spoil Penn State's season with a shocking upset. The Big Ten's greatest games, Tuesday at 6 Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network. 31-26, and Mike Hart right back on the bicycle. You know, Carissa Thompson was uh, along the sideline a moment ago, asked Mike Hart a while ago, are you hurt? He says no. But he's showing his heart now. As a leader of this team, he came back for this. He came back along with Jake Long and along with Chad Henney to try and make amends for what happened against Ohio State and then Southern California last year. And look at, and even when he was out of the game, you made a great point, Tom, of noticing Mike Hart involved in the sideline discussions, involved in the huddles before guys went out on the field. He never mentally checked out of this football game. And now he's physically inserted himself back in and in a big way. Michigan, we need to get more than a quarter left to play, and it's down to a five-point game. All the pressure to me now shifts back to Appalachian State. And this has all of a sudden become a bit of a tentative group now for Appalachian State. They've turned the ball over twice here in the second half. Yes, they have kicked a field goal, and they had a touchdown pass dropped. Hillary across the 20 to the 26-yard line, and that's where Armonte Edwards, who did not make a single mistake in the first half, hit on 7-of-7 seven seven passing, threw for three touchdowns. He ran the ball well. 
But here in the second half, has thrown an interception and fumbled the football. And where this game has started to turn, is I give you a two-play sequence. The drop touchdown by Quick, and then the field goal that hits the upright, as he hits the, 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 the upright and bounces back. That two-play sequence really helped Michigan in a big way. Devin Moore has come into the backfield, replacing Richardson, at least for a play. And they come out throw a dangerous throw at that, and Batashan hangs on and gets out to the 31-yard line. My, oh my, what a dangerous throw. Hey, go, but he made it. Go back to the, the first series of the game when he threw that same route to Dexter Jackson, but he put it in the right spot for Dexter Jackson. Here he threw it behind Batashan, who had to make a circus catch. That is the end of the third quarter. We could be a quarter away from one of the greatest upsets in the history of college football. We're back to Michigan in a moment. They're called Tiendas. Thousands of tiny storefronts across Central America that sell food and goods to millions. But delivering refrigerated food to them takes a different approach than for big stores. So Cargill built a creative distribution system, equipping salespeople with icebox scooters and handheld computers to call on the tiendas and deliver the small but essential inventory they need when they need it. This is how Cargill works with customers. Capacity, 107,501. How do they all find parking? This is Big Ten country, and this is where it lives. To make sure you get the Big Ten Network, go to BigTenNetwork.com or call 866-WANT-B-1-0. It's not just a jersey. It's a symbol of who we are. A community of coaches, student athletes, and fans. Bound together by a code of conduct. on the line at the Horseshoe as undefeated Michigan clashes with unbeaten Ohio State in a nail-biter from last season. Then, we're going back to 1999 as Minnesota's out to spoil Penn State's season with a shocking upset. The Big Ten's Greatest Games, Tuesday at 6 Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network. If you believe in me, I will, I will believe even the first day I met coach, he made me feel like I could do better. Uh, you can do better. If you believe in me. I hated that. Feeling like the best I could do would only last one day. I will believe in what will be. But I stuck with it. Well, actually, he stuck with me. When I finally did win, he wasn't surprised. I knew you had it in you. Believing. Pass it on. You did real good. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. You're watching the Big Ten Network. Oh, what a day it's been. Season opener. 
in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And we open the fourth quarter on the first down carry by Richardson. He spun to the ground by Sean Crable. 31-26 in front of Appalachian State, the two-time defending FCS champions. That's formerly called Division I AA. They've won it all in back-to-back -back years. And here you have Michigan ranked in every top five preseason poll down as we begin the fourth quarter. But right now, Michigan actually has the momentum going their way. If they can force a punt or get a big play here, look out. Play clock. Delay of game. Delay of game. Delay of game on the offense. Five yards for the lead. The down. And perhaps the idea of, of everything going on around them yep. is starting to shake up Appalachian State a bit. They are they are becoming more tentative. You asked that question a while ago. At that point, I thought they were still running their offense, but it seems like they're taking more time to do everything right now. The idea of winning this game really looms heavy over the heads of Appalachian State. Edwards fires behind the intended target, Hillary. He was open. But the ball wasn't there. When you try to be too precise and too perfect in throwing the football, you end up doing this. Earlier in the game, he was freewheeling it, wasn't he? Ball was right where it was supposed to be. The last few throws, the last few plays haven't quite been that way for Armonte Edwards. Three and out for the Michigan defense, and they should get good field position as Neil Young will punt from his own 12-yard line. And the ball will bounce. Johnny Sears going to pick it up on the bounce. Stiff arms a tackle. And then escapes. And a flag is down on the play. From where he broke the tackle initially, Russell Wilson receiving that stiff arm from Sears. And is this going to be a face mask penalty? That's what Michigan is indicating. This is foul. Face mask. Number 59 of the kicking team. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. See, and that was not the five-yard version. That was the big one. Right there. Number 59, Russell Wilson, the long snapper. Guilty of the infraction. That puts Michigan in great shape at the 34-yard line of Appalachian State. And now this crowd quiet so much of today. Starting to smell it. Arrington and Manningham have one-on-ones on the corners. They're going to hand it off to Hart. Big hole. Inside the 30, down to the 27. Roman losing his helmet on the play. Big offensive line of Michigan really starting to, to assert itself in the second half here. Now they're starting to carve a few gaps for their runners to go through. Again, it's hard. And he skips his way all the way down to the 20-yard line. Now I'm trying to get into the head of Mike DeBoer, the play caller for Michigan. And what I'm sensing from him right now is I don't need a big play. You know, I want to grind these guys a little bit. My guys are feeling better about themselves. If we can go ahead and continue to run the ball with this type of success, I'm not going to change up on that and go for any big strikes. Well, certainly so something we heard from you know back doing the Fiesta Bowl when it was Boise State against Oklahoma many believed that as a game went on Oklahoma could wear down the Broncos and perhaps that is a thinking here although early movement along the Michigan offensive first line number 57 on the offense five yard penalty repeat first down I mean let's face it if you just look at sheer size there is no contest between this Michigan offensive line as opposed to the Appalachian State defensive line. Left-hand side, number 57, that would be Adam Krause, the All-America can All candidate at guard. 
jumped down a little bit early, and the ball was coming to his side of the line. First and 15, they play fake to Hart, rolling right handy, being chased by Banks. Throws across his body and intercepted. Leonard Love shoved out of bounds. What a huge play by Leonard Love in the Mountaineer defense. A 26-yard return. Penny was feeling the heat. And what we saw was one of the few mistakes Chad Henney will make on a play like that. Because on this bootleg, as he fakes it to Hart and comes outside, he's trying to hit Massey, 83, a short target. Instead, he tries to throw back inside, and that's a cardinal rule. Don't throw back inside after you've cut the field down in half because you've constricted it. Now you've got too many people in the small area. Ball should have just gone sailing over the sideline. Chad Henney doesn't ordinarily make that mistake. So now 12-23 as the momentum is swung back the other way. First time in a long while. It's come to the Appalachian State side. And again, they stay very conservative now as they hand it off to Richardson. Now for Armonte Edwards, we talked about what a sensational first half he had. The sophomore out of Greenwood, South Carolina in the second half. Five of eight for 41 yards after a seven for seven first half. But in the second half, he has also fumbled the ball and thrown an interception. That's the key, because five of eight doesn't sound bad, but you just made the point of why it's been a difficult second half. Miss Reed. Between the quarterback Edwards and Dexter Jackson, so this huge defensive play made by Appalachian State could go all for naught if they can't convert on third down. And Michigan's secondary has gotten more aggressive in the second half. The coverage much tighter in the second half. We saw a lot of guys running free in the first half. So far, I'm seeing a lot, a lot better coverage out of the defensive backs because they're getting increased pressure from the defensive line. Well, do they play the field and possession game here now? They hand it off on third down? No, play fake. They're going for a first down. Intended throw across the middle. Great coverage again. You just talked about it, Charles Davis, by the Michigan secondary. So three and out after the interception. In the first half, he's wide open. In the second half, we're seeing the bracketed coverage that we've seen from Appalachian State. Now the Michigan Wolverines had two guys in the area to one receiver for Appalachian State. Johnny Sears stands back at his own 25-yard line. And the punt by Neil Young. Good kick. And a fair catch made by Sears at the 23-yard line. 11-31 to play at Michigan Stadium. And the home team trails 31-26. he wanted but there was only one thing that he really wanted the championship Doug Gust and the Suzuki Quad Racer R450 2006 WPSA Power Sports ATV Tour Champions the big house capacity 107,501 how do they all find parking? This is Big Ten country. And this is where it lives. 
To make sure you get the Big Ten Network, go to BigTenNetwork.com or call 866-WANT-B-1-0. Northeastern and Northwestern today on the Big Ten Network. Here, a stunning three plus quarters of football. Appalachian State leading the University of Michigan 31 to 26. Michigan with the football. Starting this drive from its own 24 yard line. First and 10 Wolverines. Again, we'd like to welcome those of you joining us from Northeastern and Northwestern here on the Big Ten Network. Michigan, a first down carry by Mike Hart. With the Wolverines trailing Appalachian State back to back Division I AA national champions. But they're coming into Michigan in front of a paid crowd of 109,218. And Coach Jerry Moore's team has come to play. Second down, and they stay on the ground. And Hart breaks into the open field and is shoved out of bounds close to midfield. And Hart join with Leonard Love. Yeah, and Leonard Love threw a little verbal trash Hart's way after shoving him out of bounds. What Leonard Love has to realize is how far downfield he is before he makes this play. Watch. Mike Hart's chewing up the ground. Now, now you're going to throw a little trash his way. That's not the time. He just run for a first down and more. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, no one cares about that play if you're flexing. 17 carries, 112 yards for Hunt. And now Michigan at midfield with less than 11 minutes to go. Brandon Meyer. Meyer just colliding a violent collision indeed with Jock Roman. Knocked his helmet off. That's about the second or third time Roman's hat has been off this ball game. Well, he might need a little better fit from the or a haircut equipment man. <laughs> Once again, folks, football is not a contact game. It's a collision sport. A gain of two by Miner, who stays in the game. And uh, not sure what the delay is here. Is this a timeout? Might have an injury. Oh, yes, we do. Walking away is Jeremy Chula, who was running in a neck and neck race for the starting right guard spot with Alex Mitchell. And then Mitchell got hurt just a couple of weeks ago. And he is unavailable for the first two games of the year. So Mark Ortman, number 71, has come into the game to replace Jeremy Chula. And that kicks, it looked like they kicked Steve Schilling. Steven showing number 52 from tackle in the guard. Mike Hart again with the football, so a third down upcoming. Looks like third and about well, four yards for the Wolverines. Mike Hart showing the stamina that we've heard about. Legendary now that he's back into the ball game. Missed a bunch of series in the middle part, but he's back now when they've needed him most. Biggest play of the game offensively for Michigan. Penny fires. What a catch made by Matthews. First down. We welcome those of you watching. The Youngstown State Ohio State game here at Michigan Stadium. Over 109,000 on hand in Appalachian State. The back to back Division I AA national champions lead the Wolverines 31 26. We're in the fourth quarter. The play blown dead before it ever got started. 
Sophomore quarterback Armonte Edwards. Charge this step. Ball start. Number 71 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. Armonte Edwards, a perfect seven for seven in the first half through three touchdown passes. And Michigan just looked completely dumbfounded trying to slow down the Mountaineers offensively. Here in the second half, things have tightened up considerably by that Michigan defense. Edwards has turned it over twice, an interception and a fumble. And I go back to the drop touchdown pass by the wide receiver Brian Quick and the missed field goal, and things have changed ever since those two plays. Mike Hart was on the bench for an extended period of time for those of you just joining us. In fact, did not carry this entire second half until the last Wolverine drive. And look at him, zone blocking. That just means you just step in the area from where you come out of your stance. Just take a step to your right or your left. The whole line does it. It's like they're all on a track together. Everybody's stepping the same way, getting your hand wide and your inside hand to punch. And whoever you find in that area, you try and move and clean out. And it's up to the back to find the gap to get through. And Mike Hart has found those in the second half. Hart out his 20th career 100-yard rushing day and three consecutive season openers. Here's Miner. And a flag comes down. Got to believe this will be a hold more than likely. It came in that quickly against the Michigan offensive line, but we'll wait and see. Came in from the linesman, too, off, of the, off to the side. Well, false start. Might have had a receiver out wide just get motion a little bit too quickly. Basically Illegal flag. formation. Less than seven on the line of scrimmage on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. How many times is that today for Michigan? That's right, two, three times we've had that. So you count the interior guys, it's five, and then it's the wide receivers, because sometimes what you get in motion is sometimes the receiver has to step off the line in order to be legal, and another has to step up to the line to be legal. Somebody didn't do one of those two things. This is a huge play for Michigan. You don't want to be facing third and 14. In a second down and 14 at the Mountaineers' 42-year line. Penny steps up, fires, and in and out of the hands of Matthews. Great coverage by the linebacker, Cam Spear. And even if he catches that one, what do they gain on that? Back to the line of scrimmage? Really had nothing there. It's a great job of coverage by Appalachian State. It would have been a terrific catch, and he would have gone down about where the line of scrimmage is. This could be, and there's still a 7.45 to go. This could be the biggest play of the game right here and right now. And it could be two down territory. They may feel the battle if they get yardage here about going for it on fourth down. Massing in motion. Henny under center. Steps up. And he will run. And is shy of the first down to the 33 yard line. They need to get to the 28. He was tripped up by Roman. Do you go here down five with seven and a half to pull up? I, I think that you do. You know why? Because you're down five, field goal does nothing for you. You're too deep in territory to punt the football. I think you go for it here and try and pick it up with your high octane offense. Chad Henney trying to do his Armonte Edwards impression, and for him, that was quite good. Hart the long setback. On third down, or fourth down, and we'll call it five. Remember, Mike Hart's a good receiver if they can get him out in the pattern. He may have to stay in and block. They're going to throw, and they step up, and incomplete. So Appalachian State takes over on downs. Looking for an interference call is Massey along with Hart. But Jerry Moore's team stands tall, and now Lloyd Carr and company are trying to do the same on defense. Oh, my goodness. Under seven to go. The Wolverines down. I'd like a personal checking account. Well, I'm all ears. What's your name? Uh, Rob. Rob Lee. All right, Bill, can I call you Willie? Emma, how about a cup of coffee for Frank here? Rob. I heard that. You married Ernesto? No. A little something for the missus. Here's your milkshake, Kenny. Rob. Uh -huh. Personal checking at other banks isn't always personal. I need you here, Teddy. U.S. bank checking is built around you with interest on balances, free internet bill pay, free ATMs, and the most reward choices, even cash back. U.S. bank. Five-star service guaranteed. How many stars does your bank have? Bye, Murray. Rob the big house capacity 107,501 how do they all find parking this is big 10 country
this is where it lives. To make sure you get the Big Ten Network, go to BigTenNetwork.com or call 866-WANT-B-1-0. For those who can't turn it off, now there's a place where you can always turn it on. This is Big Ten Country. If you believe in me, I will, I will believe in what will be. Even the first day I met Coach, he made me feel like I could do better. Yeah, you can do better. If you believe in me. I hated that. Feeling like the best I could do would only last one day. But I stuck with it. Well, actually, he stuck with me. When I finally did win, he wasn't surprised. I knew you had it in you. Believing. Pass it on. You did real good. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. This is the Big Ten Network. Big Ten Network football is brought to you by U.S. Bank, home of the five-star service guaranteed by Yield Guard VT Triple, the yield protection system, and by Buffalo Wild Wings. You have to be here. Now the Big Ten Network kicking off our inaugural Saturday of college football. Chad Henney and the Wolverines trailing Appalachian State. 31-26, safe throw there, and then Corman fell down. Yeah, they had, they had a better play there, didn't they? I mean, they had a better opportunity if Corman doesn't fall down on that play. And I like the play calling, because just as this drive started, it flashed in my mind. This is not the time to totally go turtle here. You know, if you have much say you don't make a crazy throw, but run your offense. You need first downs. Run like you need to score. Not try and protect the lead, because protecting the lead hasn't worked all that well. Well, you can just feel the anxiety in this stadium. Knowing we're down to the six-minute mark, and the Wolverines are trailing and don't have the football. There's a sack of Edwards. Grable, along with Terrence Taylor, and the clock continues to run. We're now under six. And it's a monster third and long coming, and Sean Crable's done a great job. Rush Tim Jamison from the backside, number 90, actually flushed Armonte Edwards into the pocket, which set it up for Terrence Taylor. In the first half, Appalachian State six of seven, converting on third down. In the second half, one for five. Five receivers set, and they're coming after Edwards, and they got it. Grable again. Well, this Michigan defense has been far better in the second half than in the first. Watch Adams, 22 in the middle of the field, the free safety. He's running up to go cover someone. That tells me they went all out. Ron English said all out blitz, man-to-man -man coverage, no free safety in the middle. We're going to get him, and they got it. Great call by Ron English, the defensive coordinator. Now the punt by Young, and coming up to get it, a fair catch signal for, and then bobbled and able to cover it right back up as Sears. Great field position for Michigan. For seniors, Chad Henning, Jake Long, Mike Hart. One of the biggest drives of their career coming up. The number one barrier against insects and weeds just got even better. Introducing YieldGuard VT Triple. These root tissue scans prove YieldGuard VT Triple roots express more consistent insect controlling protein for an even better barrier of yield protection. Better root protection, stalk protection, and unsurpassed weed control of the Roundup Ready system to maximize yield potential of today's top hybrids. New Yield Guard VT Triple, the yield protection system.
Buffalo Wild Wings. You have to be here. They are the Big Ten's greatest games. Tuesday, get ready for a colossal doubleheader. First, the Big Ten titles on the line at the Horseshoe as undefeated Michigan clashes with unbeaten Ohio State in a nail-biter from last season. Then, we're going back to 1999 as Minnesota's out to spoil Penn State's season with a shocking upset. The Big Ten's greatest games, Tuesday at 6 Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network. It's not just a jersey. It's a symbol of who we are. A community of coaches, student athletes, and fans. Bound together by a code of conduct. Michigan trailing 31-26. We talked about how big is this drive. Guys like Jake Long, Mike Hart, Chad Henney all returning. Sean Crabel for a senior year at Michigan and a chance to beat Ohio State, something this senior class has never done. A chance to win a Big Ten. And now Hart, the senior, still on his feet. Cuts it back the other way. Hart to the 10, to the 5, touchdown. drive and desire none bigger on this Michigan team than Mike Hart the soul of this ball club shows it again and they're gonna go for two it is a one-point lead minor in the backfield they'll get it to minor and he falls down so for the second time today, the Wolverines fail on a two-point conversion. And the question most should be asking even after the 53-yard run, why is Hart out of the game? So 32-31 Michigan. Michigan's first lead since it was 14-7. The heart, the soul, as you said, Charles Davis, of the Wolverines is Mike Hart. No question about it. It's been like that for a long time. And his desire and, and, and the inspiration he provided coming back into this game, because they've blown a few opportunities, Tom. You and I talked about that on commercial breaks. The second half, they were there, and now they finally get to the end zone. Can the defense continue to play as spirited as they have most of the second half? All right now, Appalachian State has two timeouts remaining, and they're down one. You know it's weird? Down one, that might loosen them up to play as they did earlier, you know? <laughs> Here's Hillary from the one. Out across and tackled for the 27. Good return and a good tackle. Made by Austin Panner. He committed a big penalty earlier in the game. So Armonte Edwards. The ball doesn't quite get to the end zone. Hillary trying to get into the seam. Great job by Panner, number 54, tripping him up. If he doesn't take him out there, there's a possibility for Coco Hillary to gain big yardage. And now this defense. Encouraging the crowd, which has been by and large silent all day long. Armani Edwards, a sophomore. Can he now lead his team down the field? Throw. Intercepted. Brandon Engelman. See 
Edwards looking off and coming back to the other side. And this one is just a, a pass that's too far away for Corman to get to. The only person who could have caught it was Brandon Engelman, and that he did. So Michigan right back on offense. And again, Mike Hart is not in the game. It's Brandon Miner after Hart went 53 yards a moment ago for a touchdown. And Miner will get the football. Still on his feet. He needs to think ball security in this situation. Ball Lose security the most ball security now. back in the, in the country. Mike Hart. There's got to be a reason for him not in to be in the game. Appalachian State. Their second and a half. A 30 second timeout. I think Mike Hart's going back on the field now. He's probably getting a little extra break after that long touchdown run. Miner getting the first carry. But the big thing now is ball security. Again, don't go turtle. Don't, you know, don't go into a shell. But give it to that big Haas and let him try and wear down Appalachian State and try and close this one out for Michigan. It has not been a particularly good day for Chad Henning. Hart really sat most of this game on the bench. He obviously started the game. He played and through, what, through midway through the second quarter, and then we didn't see him again for a long time. Did not get a carry until the very end of the third quarter. And since he's come in the game, they have scored touchdowns to take the lead. It's one of those things that made me go, hmm. Where's Mike Hart? And Mike, Hart said that. And Mike Hart said, I'm coming back. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I just need to get on the bike. I just need to get on the bike. You know, he did, he did his Lance Armstrong impersonation, and now he's back out there. So Hart is indeed in the Michigan backfield. Second down and four, 4.15 to go in Ann Arbor. Foul number 44. That takes you to Mike Hart. And there's Hart for a first down. <laughs> And what I meant by that, Tom, was follow Mark Moundros, number 44, the former walk-on fullback. He's coming right at you. See him right there cleaning up Jock Roman, number 40, as the lead blocker. Mark Moundros is going to take you to where the point of where the uh, play is going to be. The problem is trying to get to Mike Hart through him is very difficult. Of course, his brother Kirk was a fullback at Michigan. Under four minutes to go, a new set of downs for the Wolverines. And back to the ground and Hart. And able to get maybe back to the line of scrimmage. But in good shape as the clock continues to run. Appalachian State down to one timeout remaining. Well, you can't say enough about what Appalachian State has done here today. It may not be a winning day after it looked like it had a real good chance to be one of those just a short while ago. But these young men and this entire staff, this entire university has been spectacularly represented in Ann Arbor, Michigan here today. And that man, Jerry Moore, will have more than two national championships to his credit when all is said and done. He might make it three in a row this year in the FCS. Which no one has done before. The closest we've had is Jim Tressel, the head coach at Ohio State, when he was at Youngstown State, won three in four years. The yield guard, BT Triple, defensive player of the game. Who else but Tri-Captain Sean Crater. Look at that. I mean, those are numbers. And the effort and the hustle and the leadership that he's shown throughout the, throughout the day has been quite impressive because he never let his guys check totally out of this game mentally. He made them stay with it. Third down and five. And he was going to throw on a third down there. Delayed game on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. I got to tell you, Charles, that, you know, Look, this is our first game here, but but I got to tell you, I, I, now whether he would have thrown the ball, maybe they were trying to let the clock run out, I don't the play clock, so. I have no idea. But why in the world are they throwing on third and five? I think because despite the bad throw earlier, there's a lot of trust in the senior quarterback, and he wanted to try and get this first down to continue to keep this clock moving. And he to throw on third down and 10, and the Pats thrown down to the 29-yard line. Sort of brings up fourth down for the Wolverines. Clock running down to a minute 50. We welcome those of you 
watching today Florida International at Penn State here outside of a 14 to 7 lead Appalachian State for third and final timeout by Michigan second timeout. late in the first quarter this game entirely belonged to Appalachian State leading up through the first half and the better part of the third quarter but two significant plays a drop touchdown pass in the end zone by Appalachian State a field goal try that hit the upright obviously a total of three points were scored when it could have been and should have been ten and right now the difference is one as Michigan will they try a field goal here coming up next it'll be the Big Ten post game show a complete wrap up of all the week one action that's coming up right after our game do you kick a field goal here yes because you're in range balls at the 26 so I think it's what a 43 yard field goal attempt Jinjel should be able to make that. He should have plenty of legs for that. He's already made one earlier. His confidence should be high. He's got his, you know, he's got to get the butterflies out of the way a little bit. You protect, you attempt the field goal because you make it, you're up four. That means a touchdown to beat you. That's a long way to go for the Appalachian State. Sean Griffin, the snapper. Mesco, the holder. Jinjel, the kicker. And that is blocked to the line of scrimmage. And they're telling him, don't touch it. So they cannot kick the field goal. So they'll spot it. There was a final spot on that play. It'll be the 20-yard line after that ball rolled into the end zone. For 32-31 Michigan, we'd like to remind you our copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Big Ten Conference and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Big Ten Conference. I can hear people now screaming, why did they kick it? Why did they kick it? Well, it's fourth or six and fourth or fourth and six and fourth or seven. So what are your odds of making that at this stage? Very difficult. Field goal puts you up four. You miss it, you're still in the same spot. 135 to go. Edwards can really run, and he's off to the races. A big pickup. And he's out to the 45. Bear in mind now, a minute 30 left to go. Appalachian State is out of timeouts. But all they need is a field goal to get out of here with a win. So that's why people are saying, well, you should, you got to go and keep the ball. ball. Hey, you kick the field goal and you make it your up four. Because they missed, everyone's going to say, well, why did they do that? It was the execution, not the idea. The idea was correct. Now, how do you keep them out of field goal? Remember, no timeouts, but every first down stops the clock. 18-yard gain by Edwards. Remember, Appalachian State led at halftime, 28 to 17. Got the Douglas pass. Hillary. He's going to throw the ball, and he just is shoved out of bounds. They wanted him to throw the ball down the field to Josh Johnson. So the clock stops at 1:22. Felt it coming at us because of the motion. When they ran the guy in motion, he didn't get into the proper spot. Talk about Kevin Richards and the running back. And the timing of the play was fouled up right from the beginning. See, watch as he goes into motion here. He ends up running in front of his receiver. Normally, you go behind. That's when I thought, okay, he's trying to get position to block. And Hiller is a former quarterback. Great job by Michigan smothering it. Second down, they're coming after Edwards. And he gets it away, caught by Corman, dances away from one tackler down the sideline to the 40 yard line. What an unbelievable run by Corman. He juked a tackler and stayed along the sideline. A gain of 20. He beat Jamar Adams. And what a nifty move on the sideline because my first thought was get out of bounds, save time. And when he made the move inside, I said, oh boy. And then he got additional yards of first down, then got out of bounds. Great job by TJ Corman, number 12. So hold on a minute. A one point game and Appalachian State getting close. Here they come again. And a catch is made by Battishon. Again, remember, Appalachian State out of timeouts. That is not a first down. The clock continues to run. Michigan is going to win or lose this game with their defense, which was the question mark coming into this season. And a throw and a catch. And is it enough for a first down on the lean by Jackson? It is. So the clock will stop. 50 seconds remain. And all of a sudden, they're getting very close to field goal territory. In fact, they are well within the range 
of Roush. His career long is 48. They're basically there right now. Michigan fans are wondering who's going to make a big play on defense. Can Sean Crable do it again? Edwards rolling left, throws across the middle, caught by Hillary all the way to the five-yard line. Now, Michigan's got to think about timeouts because if Appalachian State runs it down, they'll have no chance to retaliate. This is absolutely unbelievable. It looked just a moment ago like Appalachian State could not get off the mat, and now it's first and goal. Timeout, Michigan. So you got to think about A 30-second timeout. timeout. That's what I'm saying. With Michigan, they're, they have two timeouts. Now they're down to one. They have to utilize these in case they have to go back and get the ball. They want to keep some time on the clock because Appalachian State's going to try and run it down. Well, you talk about some of the greatest upsets in the history of college football, and we're going way back now. In 1950, Navy shocked Army. An Army that was one of the powers of the country then at that time. Notre Dame in 1957. Now, granted, it is Notre Dame. Yes. But Oklahoma had won 47 consecutive games. Back in 1957, the Irish stopped it. In 1956, Notre Dame was 2-7. and seven. Center College beat Harvard, the football power in America, in 1921. Bo McMillan's playing Colonels with the big upset. And Carnegie Tech over number four Notre Dame in 1929. This game today would rank unquestionably with every single one of those. Remember who was the head coach of Notre Dame in 1929? It'd be Knute Rockman. Now Roush was sent out initially on the field for a kick and they pulled him back. Apparently, they're not going to try a field goal yet, but they're out of timeouts. Out of timeouts, so what you can do here. That is a field, yeah, goal. field goal. They can't afford not to do it. Russell it. Wilson, the long snapper. Hunter Stewart, the holder. Julian Roush, the all-time leading scorer among kickers in Appalachian State history. This is for one of the greatest upsets in the history of college football. And it is good. A two-point lead for Appalachian State. There is still time, of course, for Michigan. Only down two with 26 seconds left. But Roush drills it through. That was one of the guttiest drives I've seen in a long time. And I made a comment a little while ago, and, and I wasn't sure I was on track. I'm still not sure, but the idea was they were playing a little bit tighter. We noticed that, right? Where things weren't as freewheeling for them. Then Michigan goes ahead. It almost frees you up, almost liberates you to go back, because now you have to go back and try and win the game. And boy, that sure worked it. That looked like what we saw for most of the game, didn't it, with Appalachian State? Well, that's a great point. You know, now they're like, okay, now we're back with it. Now for Michigan, here's the deal. Kickoff from the 30-yard line. The new rule comes right into play because Roush has a great leg, but if he doesn't get it through the end zone or, or in a spot where you can't return it, you've got a chance for a great return if you're Michigan. Now, does Appalachian State try something, you know, kick it short, squib it? Well, that sets up field position. Michigan only needs a field goal. First downs, sidelines in, your, in running your offense to try and get one more opportunity for Jim Gell. Well, the Michigan band and some of the student body trying, trying so desperately to get behind their football team. But outside of that small number of people in a stadium that has over 109,000 fans in it right now, there's not much noise. Near misses in the past by Appalachian State last year at North Carolina State. They played LSU so well back in 2005 down at Death Valley. In 99, they lost on a last second play at Auburn. And they've had numerous close calls, but nothing like this. Do you know they've got six wins in their, in their history over what was Division 1A, or football bowl subdivision teams? To this date, all of those wins have been over Wake Forest. If they could add Michigan, oh my. They're now a short kick, very returnable for Miner at the 20-yard line. And he is still on his feet out to the 20 or the 34-yard line. So Michigan, one timeout remaining. Just 21 seconds left. And Chad Henner, the senior, native Pennsylvania, 
is going to have to put it up and put it up on the money in a hurry to get him within field goal range. We mentioned Gingell, their kicker, had never kicked a field goal in college before today, and he's hit two. Last one was blocked. Any good protection. Throws to the far side, incomplete. He had an eye on Matthews. Boy, what a quiet day it has been for Henny and this talented group of wide receivers. Henny has hit on 18 of 36 for 187 yards, a touchdown and an interception. Matthews has seven catches. Mario Manningham has two for 20 yards. Awfully quiet days. A lot of credit to the Appalachian State corners. And right now, the guys in the middle of the field, 47, Corey Lynch, 22, Leonard Love, a lot of pressure on them. They can't let anyone behind them. Penny steps up, puts it in the air down the sideline, looking for Manningham. A flag is down. He caught the ball at the 20-yard line. Now, what's the call? Is he going to call offensive pass interference because there was body contact between the two? Pass interference on the defense. That's on Wose in a 46-yard completion. You gotta kick the field goal here, don't you? You are out of timeout. No, you have one left. Michigan has one left. You have one left, but there's only six seconds. I think you have to kick the field goal here. Timeout, Michigan. Your third and final timeout. You and I in the first game. Timeout we ever did together in college football was Boise State in Oklahoma last year in the desert out in Phoenix, Arizona when Boise State shocked the world. Today, Appalachian State kicks a field goal in the final seconds to go up by two and now this, a big pass play to get Michigan a chance to win it. You think Coach Kressel is going to be happy to see us next week? I mean, the, you know, we've taken on all these big guys, and that's just tough for them. Here we go. They're going to kick the field goal. It'll be Jason Gingell out of the hold of Mesco. Good snap. Good hold. And the kick is blocked. Appalachian State has stunned the college football world. One of the greatest upsets in sports history. Blocked by Corey Lynch. This is just a crowning achievement for them right here. Even the, it won't be any more important than those last two national championships, but it certainly ranks right in there close. And it just shows you, I think, what we've got good football in one double-A football, what used to be one double-A football. We're, we're proud of our football team, and we beat a good Michigan football team right here on this field. That's what's so remarkable about this. I should have given you a moment to catch your breath because I think everyone in this big house right now is still holding their breath. What do you say to your team with a performance like this? <laughs> it's just... You know, they just got bless them. They're just a bunch of great kids that uh, a huge commitment and uh, just a, a crowning achievement for them. For them, they've worked so hard to get where they are right now. I can't tell you how hard we work during two-day practices, and it all pay off for them right here today. And just in case you forgot, one of the biggest upsets in college football history. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. All. you. Boone, North Carolina is called the brightest star in the constellation of communities that dot the Blue Ridge Mountains. And they are the brightest stars in college football on this opening Saturday of the 2007 year. Our Cooper tires stop of the game. The block on the game winning field goal try. How about them? And it was Corey Lynch who not only blocked the field goal attempt, picked it up and ran out the clock. 
Now, the smart play is to just go down at this point. You don't want to fumble and have something crazy happen where Michigan can pick it up and advance it. But who is going to tell him no at that stage? Congratulations, Appalachian State. Carissa standing by with the young quarterback, Armonte Edwards. Carissa. One word to describe what just happened out there. We just beat Michigan, you know, plain and simple. We've been studying them real hard, and then we saw some openings in, our, in their defense, and we executed. Armani Edwards, if people didn't know your name before today, they sure do now. You had a nearly perfect first half, a couple of flub-ups in the second half, but needless to say, your team came out, and you just beat Michigan in one of the biggest upsets in college football history. Yeah, um, you know, the second half, we had a lot of mental mistakes because we was up, but we got back on it in the fourth quarter. Were you more impressed with your guys' offense or the way that your defense stopped the Michigan offense? It, both sides, but really on offense, we already knew what we had to do, and if they played like they played today, we could beat anybody. On defense, I really haven't seen our defense, but I know they're good. A great performance by you, Imani Edwards, and your entire team, Appalachian State. Back to you guys. Imani, you think this is the biggest upset in the history of college? What a day, what a day. Charles, the biggest upset in the history of football for you, yes or no? For me, yes. For me, Let's yes. Send it back to Chicago. What a start on the Big Ten Network. Well, what a way to kick off a network. Huh? <laughs> Welcome to our Big Ten Football Saturday post game report. Dave Riffs and Jerry DiNardo and Howard Griffith. Absolutely one of the most stunning upsets you will ever see in college football. If you missed any of it, we want to show you how it happened. The guys are going to have complete reaction coming up in a moment here. We will get you to the highlight in just a minute. But, guys, real quick, just off the top, give me your, your kind of gut reaction as to what we just saw. The most unbelievable part of it was after App State lost the lead, they came back and won it at the end, and they blocked the field goal. Well, you know, I think this goal, you have to take your hat off uh, to Jerry Moore, who did a tremendous job of getting his team prepared to go into the big house when nobody gave him a chance. They still came out against adversity and won this game. If you had to put your finger on one thing, kind of the how did they do it, how did they do it? Uh, Michigan secondary was absolutely awful. They couldn't cover anybody. They couldn't tackle a quarterback on a decide option. I would say the... The glaring problem was Michigan's secondary. And Michigan's defensive line was able to get some pressure on them at times early in that fourth quarter, which got them the ball back when they were able to get the lead. But when they needed them, they weren't there. Yeah, Armani Edwards, 17 of 23 in this game, 227 yards, three TDs, couple interceptions. And the interceptions looked like they were going to hurt him late. As it turned out, they didn't. You kind of thought that the, the big guns for Michigan had bailed them out. Mike Hart. Had the big touchdown run to put him ahead. Then they had the bomb from Henny to Manningham. So you got the sense that everyone had, had stepped up. What happened, though, on the blocked field goal? Well, it looked like the, either the left tight end or the left wing, left tackle, that left side of the line, it looked like they just cut someone loose. It didn't even look like they made contact with them. And, Coach, one of the things you talked about before this game started well, were you, would you be able to make be special in special teams because you don't get an opportunity to do a lot of live drills with special teams, and it may have cost them the end of the game. Uh, the guys who called the game, the guys who had the best seat for it, Tom Brenneman and Charles Davis, rejoin us now from Ann Arbor. And guys, unbelievable. Give us a sense of uh, what the atmosphere is like right now in the big house. Yeah, you know, Dave, it's really not that much different than it was for the overwhelming majority of this day. I mean, you talk about a crowd, Charles, of 109,000 people. It only seats 107, and they jam 109 in here. And they were ready to roll when this game started. But right from the start, it was pretty clear that Appalachian State was concerned about winning a football game here. And now people are standing around in the stands in just disbelief. You talked near the end of the game, Tom, about near misses for Appalachian State in their history at LSU a couple of years ago, at NC State last year, last second play against Auburn. They were tired of that. In their history, the only, the only team they had beaten that's in a, a, an FBS category is Wake Forest six times in their history. Now they've added Michigan going into the record books at Appalachian State. Say that again, Michigan loses to Appalachian State at home in a season opener. Traditionally, season openers aren't times for upsets because people are so excited about playing. I know this time, any power that's playing a decided underdog does not want to see the two of us right. announcing because Boise State, Oklahoma, this now, 
I don't know what more I can do. You know, you know, Dave uh, and guys back there, you know, you wonder right now, what is the mindset of this Michigan team? You're talking about guys that could have gone to the NFL, could have signed for millions of dollars. Jake Long, Chad Henney, Mike Hart. They come back to play another year at Michigan, and here they lose their first game of the season after back-to-back -back losses at the end of last year. I can't imagine what it's like right now inside of that Michigan locker room. I think that's a great point, Tom. And, uh, you know, we talked to those guys, and they made it very clear. I mean, they didn't talk a lot about a national championship when we were there in Ann Arbor. I mean, they, they really talked about we want to beat Ohio State, we want to win our bowl game. But, but I think what goes along with that, what's kind of implicit in all that, is we're going to win all the other games and we're going to be national champs. What do you do now? Well, if you're Lloyd Carr, here's what you do. You go in the locker room and you go like that. And, and you think, and I'm as serious as I can be, because he has to bring him back. He's the only one on the face of the earth that has to have the right words right now. Everybody else can criticize and everybody else can have their opinion. But he's the guy who's got to get within himself and figure out what the right words are to say to that team. The season's not over. He, he has to practice what is preached. Don't, don't quit. Don't give up. Nothing's ever guaranteed. That's all going to be on Lloyd's shoulders now. He has to find the right words for his team. Well, he does, and as well as his players, Hart, Henning, Long, these guys are spectacular people as well. They just didn't come back. They had an opportunity to just take the money and run, but they came back because they wanted to win, and they're special players. Coach Carr alluded to that in our conversations with them. So those three gentlemen will be able to galvanize this team and get them back ready to play next week. Well, it's going to be fascinating to see how it goes because, remember, the schedule does not get any easier for Michigan. I mean, this was supposed to be the tune-up game. You've got Oregon, you've got Notre Dame, you've got Penn State. The next three weeks. Let's take a look at how this one happened. In case you missed it, check in on the highlight. The one double A, two time defending national champs, Appalachian State coming into the big house. They're the Wolverines traditionally touching the sign on their way in. And this is kind of how people thought it would go. Mike Hart kind of bowling his way through. Hart had 188 yards on the ground, gets it all the way down to the three, sets up a first and goal, and then in for the touchdown. And mo most of the yards they gained was on his lead zone play that you're seeing where the offensive line zones, the fullback goes through and picks up the linebacker, the extra man. On the ensuing drive, here comes Appalachian State Armani Edwards to Dexter Jackson, and he's gone for the touchdown. Ties it up at seven. Jackson, three catches, 93 yards. We Later in the first, on a second and goal, Michigan at the 10 yard line. It's Henny to Greg Matthews. And Matthews into the end zone for the touchdown. Henny was 20 of 38 for 236 yards. It's 14-7 Wolverines. But again, back comes Appalachian State. Edwards to Hans Batashan, who takes it in. It's a 14-14 tie. Next drive for Appalachian State at the Michigan 21. Edwards to Jackson, his second touchdown of the game. We knew they had the players to come up with big plays. We just didn't know they would come up with these many. And that last touchdown was a pick play. It's a fundamental play. It looked like it caught Michigan off guard in the second half. Now Edwards, who is so tough on the ground, scrambling, going in for the touchdown. 28-14 Appalachian State. They would lead it 28-17 at the half. Edwards, 16 carries, 57 yards in the game. Mike Hart not in the game to start the second half. No explanation to this point what was going on. Brandon Miner with the fumble. Appalachian State recovered. But they would not score late in the third quarter. Second and five, Michigan at the 11. Hand off to Hart, driving for the first down. Hart doing a tremendous job of really running inside the tackles, running hard, and he's really trying to make a big push to win that high school. Now, this is kind of what you expected to see. I mean, just kind of grinding the football in, and this was where Michigan had the most success. They missed the two-point conversion as Henny dropped the snap. So it's still 31-26. Now Michigan on a first and 15 at the App State 25. Henny. Intercepted by Leonard Love, and Appalachian State takes over, so they snuff out the Michigan drive. And that was a good play call because they had been running the lead. They called the boot off of it. It was a bad decision by Henny. Just over seven minutes to go. Michigan on a fourth and five, and Henny fires incomplete, so Michigan turns it over on downs. Now, final five minutes. First and ten, Michigan. It's own 46, and here comes Hart. The legend continues to grow. Michael Hart, a tremendous uh, football player, showed you there. Had been out some in the game, but got back in and set up this big touchdown. And you had to feel like 
This was the nail on the coffin, right? Hey, they gave a great effort. Michigan did miss the two-point conversion, 32-31. But look at this. The interception by Engelman. So, you know, again, the touchdown, the interception. Michigan seemingly has everything going its way. Jason Gingle has it blocked. And Appalachian State takes over, still 32-31. And you would think when, when Hart scored that touchdown that the momentum would totally be in Michigan's favor. Under a minute to go. First and 10 Appalachian State from the 29. Coco Hillary down to the six. Talking about Edwards coming up with big plays when he needed cool against his body there and made a huge play. But how about Michigan cutting guys loose again? The guy was wide open. So now it comes down on first down. Julian Roush trying for the field goal. He drills it. App State up. 34-32, 26 seconds to go. Desperation time for the Wolverines. They throw up a prayer, and the prayer is answered. Henny to Manningham, inside the 20, down to the 19. Closing seconds now, Michigan. One last chance, and it's blocked again. You always got to take that inside man when you're playing the wing. It's tough to let that guy inside just have a free run at the, uh, at the kicker and they weren't able to hold up with the block. Right, the wing should step down and let the man go outside and be free because the time the ball's kicked, it'll be clear. You never let someone go in between you and the tight end. Jerry Moore celebrating a most improbable victory. 34-32, Appalachian State goes into the big house and beats a Michigan team that had aspirations of a national championship. You look at some of the final numbers, any of these numbers really jump out at you guys as being significant? Yeah, the one that jumps out at me, we, we can't see it, we'll see it in a minute, is the third down conversion. Uh, App State was six for 13, Michigan was seven for 15. Couldn't convert on third down. I think when you look at the time of possession, uh, App State won the time of possession, which is huge. You think about a Michigan team that would be able to dominate the ball the way they did on the ground and not to also win the time of possession battle was a huge clue of what went on in this game. But still, you know, you look at the, the rushing totals that Michigan put up in this game. I think if you would have told Lloyd Carr coming into this game, hey, you're going to rush for, what was it, 240 yards, you probably would have felt pretty good about that. And Michael Hart had 188 of it. You know, and you think back to the Rose Bowl a year ago, there were times when Michigan couldn't protect against Southern Cal, and that's when Southern Cal was bringing pressure on conversion downs. I saw a little bit of that today, and it concerned me the first half when Henny couldn't set his feet when App State brought pressure. So what happens now? At Michigan, I, mean, I, I really think that's the, the biggest question. I'm going to be fascinated to hear what Lloyd Carr has to say afterwards. I, I, if you were in Lloyd Carr's shoes and you had to come out and talk to the media, Jerry, what would you say? Well, I, I think most coaches in this situation are going to say, I didn't have my team prepared. They're going to try and deflect any kind of criticism against the players. And, and Lloyd will get through the press conference, and that will be painful. But really what he has to think about more than anything tonight is what do I say to the team tomorrow? Can, can I tell them we've got Oregon next, we've got Notre Dame, we can still win the Big Ten championship? This was a non-conference game. All the cliches that probably nobody wants to hear, but they're all true. See, I, th th I think what he says to the media is really important. I, mean, I didn't say it wasn't important. Okay. I just said he'll get through it. Right. Well, he will. I mean, he's without get through a, anything. Sure. With, I mean, without a lot of thought. Okay. But what he says to his team is much more needs much more thought. Yeah. And, and is much more important. All right. Well, interesting. We're going to hear what Lloyd Carr is going to say to the media in a moment. I think it's going to be a, a fascinating news conference. There is the podium awaiting Coach Carr. We will get you out to Ann Arbor live coming up. In just a couple of minutes here, a stunning upset to open the season. Appalachian State over Michigan.